Hello, and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. Uh, so if you're not familiar, my name's Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. And I was one of the people there uh, watching the Johnny Depp trial. Uh, not as, you know, you might have heard uh, that I was some sort of massive fan, but because I was just curious and, you know, there's this whole big production and I just kind of wanted to go down and see it. And it was really fascinating from a legal perspective. Uh, if you've watched my commentary on it before, you'll, you can sort of see where I come from on this one because uh, basically I went in, I, I figured that Johnny Depp at the start of the trial was going to lose. And then I watched Amber Heard's testimony and she really changed my mind. She really convinced me that, in fact, uh, that Depp had a, a much better case because her testimony was real bad. But so today I want to go through lots of people wanted to see my reactions and my commentary on Amber Heard's interview. Now, I know this came out Friday. I haven't watched it yet. Um, and the reason why I haven't watched it yet is because I didn't really want to spoil my reactions beforehand. I've seen some clips and the clips I saw were really not good, but they did mean that I can come prepared. And what I mean by that is, of course, I've got a drink. So first drink up on the list is a really poorly made Michelada because I'm out of most of the things that go in it. So it's just Clamato and Modelo Especial. It's, it's good and it's not shots, which will... Uh, I don't think I'd survive if I was doing shots on this one. Although I did bring shot glasses and some, if it comes to it, we'll, uh, we'll get there, but all right, let's, uh, I guess dive in. I'm really, uh, I'm kind of apprehensive about just how bad this is going to be. Um, uh, this might make me a little annoyed. All right, let's fire this up. I'm Lester Holt. Tonight on Dateline, Savannah Guthrie with an NBC News exclusive. Amber Heard speaks out in her first interview since the trial watched by millions worldwide. I'm not a perfect victim. I get it. I'm not a saint. I'm not asking you to let accurate. me. But I asked the jury to just see me as human. There's no polite way to say it. The jury looked at the evidence I think this you presented, is just intro, right? they listened the to your interview. testimony, and they did not believe you. How could they not come to that conclusion? They heard over three <laughs> weeks of non-stop, relentless Lies. testimony. I'm a hysterical woman. I'm a crazy woman. I can't be trusted. The Depp team argued that you were the abuser. You instigated physical violence. I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. This is a trial run amok, played out on TikTok and social media. Are you nervous? So guys, just one thing I I know because somebody spoiled this for me a little bit. Um, they're going to mention the lineup. And so keep in mind, they have video footage of the lineup. We're seeing that, right? We can see that they've got that. Mm. So is there going to be some comments on that later? You bet there will. All right, let's keep going. Um, one thing I'm hoping that they'll do is set out what the terms and parameters of this interview are, but I'm going to bet that they're not going to do that. So we'll, uh, I'll talk about that if they get going and they don't do that. As we are here today about what you can say now, of course. Are you trying to kill me? I did everything I could. <laughs> Thank you for the, yeah, that's the Australian, I think truth. that's Australian $10. Yeah, I think that might actually murder me. All right, they're moving past the... Man, this music Here's is something today's else. show co-anchor Savannah Guthrie with Amber Heard after the verdict. I hear you. I, I feel that. You're here. Some people might ask. All right. So they didn't do the thing. And this is what I wanted to see them start off with, which is basically setting out what the parameters are, whether or not she got the questions in advance, whether or not she has editing rights over this, or whether it's going to be edited by Dateline. I captured that at the perfect moment of that face uh, or whether or not, you know, these kinds of things um, who wrote the questions, because sometimes in these interviews, the questions might actually be written by Amber Heard's PR team. 
And so that's a question I wanted to know. Did they get the questions ahead of time? Um, we already know that they've edited portions of this. I retweeted a video about that. Um, but they're not telling us any of these things, and they really ought to, because this is a trial that has been hugely about both, you know, the accuracy of what's been said, but also the media has kind of been, uh, kind of been embarrassed on this one several times. I think this is a place where they should be absolutely um, above board, and unfortunately, they're not showing their cards here. A shot every time she. I'm not doing a shot anytime she anything or I will die. But maybe I can uh, pour a shot here just to uh, see there. All right, let's see what we've got. Why? Are you brave? Are you reckless? Are you vindictive? Why did you want to do an interview? The one thing I can tell you is... Uh... How much did they pay her? They should also tell us that. Because, you know, if they're asking why did you want to do an interview... Um, if they paid her a million dollars, I will tell you, I will do an interview with any news station on the planet for a million dollars. Open offer, NBC. Uh, uh, when does this become harassment? Um, she's unfortunately got a right to talk, and he's potentially got a right to sue her for uh, for that. So that uh, that is that. All right, let's keep going. Um, one thing I'm not is vindictive. I mean... There's no part of me that sees any, um, this would be a really lousy way to get vengeance. That is true, but lousy not in the way she means. Um, it's quite an effective way to get vengeance. But she didn't sue him here. She wrote the op-eds. And, you know, that is a pretty effective way of, uh, you know, of getting vengeance on someone. Uh, and somebody's saying, first, I think Savannah's body language to Amber Heard's response is telling. Second, annoyed at the crappy jump cuts. Yes. Um, there's a lot of uh, cuts often in these things, and that that's because it lets them hide things. So when you see an interview with a lot of cuts, you should be worried about where else they've put in, uh, you know, where else they've put in cuts. And I see, thank you for covering this. So, yep. Now, I'm sorry, but the testimony made it pretty clear that she is, in fact, a vindictive person. She said as much in her audio recordings. So when she says, um, yeah, so when she says that she's not a vindictive person, not buying it so far. What do you hope to get across here? You've had everything said oh, about you. Oh, that's interesting. And what do you wish people knew? You know, Savannah, as silly as it is to say this out loud my goal the only thing i could hope for at this point just as a note anytime people this is a very common lying trick and it's something that as a defense lawyer you watch for when you're cross-examining when people couch their answers with oh you know this is going to be hard to believe or as silly as this sounds or anything like that what they're trying to do is pad the blow of something that is not honest a lot of the time so yeah that right there sets my hair on edge I just want people to see me as a human being tonight we talk with amber heard the woman at the center of one of the most sensational media spectacles in recent memory this is a case about the impact of amber heard's words on johnny depp for six weeks, millions of viewers Eight around million. the world were glued wow. to their screens, hanging on every moment of this courtroom slug. This really annoys me how they're playing this uh, with kind of a bunch of uh, intermediate stuff in here, because this is really a time when they should just play it straight as the interview. Uh, I really hope they're not going to keep sort of interspersing here. Fest between Hollywood stars. The next move was just a bang. It just, uh, she clocked me in the jaw. It just hit me over and over and over again. And I thought, this is how I die. The trial made public a volatile marriage with private moments caught on tape. I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. For some people, 
that audio they're is hard to listen to. Frankly, disgusted by the whole thing, and don't have much sympathy for either one of you. Can you understand that? Absolutely. I can understand that. I would not blame the average person for looking at this and how it's been covered and not think that it is Hollywood brats at their at their worst. I'd, but what people don't understand is it's it's actually so much bigger than that. That's a really weird answer. I mean, why she'd be empathizing with people who think that this is nothing is it's strange to me. But I mean, I can't make too much of that. This is, uh, this is not only about our First Amendment right to speak. But here's the thing about the First Amendment. The First Amendment protects free speech. It doesn't protect lies that amount to defamation. And that was the issue in the case. Yes, exactly. Free speech does not protect you if you, you know, go into a crowded theater and you scream fire. We get the... Okay, this is like the... If you follow the Twitter feed, bad legal takes... Um, this is like their top topic because this is not actually what the law says. Uh, it's this is sort of one of the most common bits of misunderstanding and it's frustrating. Um, did Amber Heard's team have final say on what was shown? I don't know. I actually think that they should have made that clear when they're leading in here to say, you know, what what again, what the terms are. You know, who gets to decide on what cuts are made and so forth. And I see we got Uncivil in the chat. Congratulations on 100,000, man. That was, uh, I was glad to see it. So good stuff. Uh, just keeping Concept on here. Concept of free speech from the Greeks. But my understanding of what that means is not just the freedom to speak. It's a freedom to speak truth to power. But truth is the word. Yes. And that was the issue. And that's all I spoke. And this is one of those places where there's a whole lot of debate as to whether or not this is a redefamation. Of course, the question then becomes, does she have any money to go after? Because in some ways, an impecunious person who's got nothing left to take um, can be a little bit immune. There's also the question of whether or not there'd be much in the way of damages, given that it's so soon after the verdict. But yeah, um, this whole thing about, you know, it doesn't just give you the right or it's not about the right to speak. It's about the right to speak truth to power. I mean, it's about the right to speak. That includes to power. Uh, she is not doing well at the law school course uh, here. So how did it all come to this? See you down the road. Amber Laura Heard grew up outside Austin, Texas, who cares? Big dreams of Hollywood stardom. After moving to Los Angeles at the age of 17, she booked a string of TV and movie roles. In this 2009, she got a call for. that would change her life. It was from superstar Johnny Depp, Here. who wanted her to co-star with him in a film called The Rum Diary. He was 46. She was half his age. Dick abuse. Months later, Amber dropped the restraining order and they divorced. And it seemed like the Depp Heard saga might end there. What? In 2018, she landed her biggest role yet in Aquaman. That same year, as the Me Too movement was in full swing, she wrote this now infamous op-ed for the Washington Post. It included a key line, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. You said many times you just wanted to go on with your life. When you wrote the op-ed, it raised all of this again. Why did you do that if you wanted to just go on and put this past you? The, the, because the op-ed wasn't about my relationship with Johnny. But it alluded to him. It, it was that, unmistakable. It, you know, what the op-ed was about was... Um, you know, me loaning my voice to a bigger cultural conversation that we were having at the time. It was about reforms, uh, legislative reforms, uh, renewing the Violence Against Women Act. Did you work? But you're clearly talking about Johnny Depp there. Like, it is, 
you know, you're lending your voice to them because you are claiming to be a a battered spouse or a battered partner. Uh, that's... Now, a lot of people have wanted me to comment on the interviewer, and so far, um, I'm not upset with what she's up to. Uh, what she's doing is she's asking some tough questions, but she's got to ask them in a very gentle way. And the reason for that is probably that this was... I mean, you got to figure that Amber is somebody who's likely to walk out of an interview. And so what I think they're doing is they're trying to hit her with the tough questions, but they're trying to do it in a way that avoids Amber uh, doing the, oh, we're done here and walking out. At least you don't want that to happen three questions in. So um, that's I think that's what she's doing. I think that's why... And this is something you often want to do in a cross-examination is start out more gentle. These aren't purely like gentle, let's just, you know, explore the issue questions. She is pushing back a little bit. So, yeah, it's not terrible, but. Sorry, gosh, I'd love to be a person weighing in on these cultural issues, but that's going to stir this all up again. You know, that that's a, a great question and one that I wish was considered more seriously because it's important when you wrote this you had legal advice before you went in are you telling me that your lawyer did not you in fact you had legal advice about whether or not this was defamation like that was testimony at the trial and in fact so how can you say that you didn't consider this when in fact you specifically contemplated the notion that you might get sued over this this she is really shameless here uh all right i'm gonna hit play again because i gotta work on getting to the bottom of this stop it it was the height of me too legions of powerful men being canceled losing their jobs did you want that to happen to johnny depp of course not it wasn't about him. I mean, of course it was about him. And, you know, does anybody believe her when she says that this wasn't vindictive? Johnny Depp disagreed and filed a $50 million defamation lawsuit against her. Good morning. Good morning. She countersued, all of which led to the recent showdown in court. I don't have to remind you that you've been found liable for defamation against Johnny Depp. Having been found liable, are you nervous as we are here today about what you can say now? Of course. I took for granted what I assumed was my right to speak, not just about what I lived through, but what I knew. Again, you went to a lawyer to a basically ask if you had filed off enough of the serial numbers to avoid a defamation lawsuit. So, mm, yeah, no. Do you feel like you could be sued again by him for defamation? I'm terrified, which is what I guess a defamation lawsuit is meant to do. It's meant to, <laughs> to take your voice. It's meant to actually provide a strong disincentive against exactly the kind of behavior that uh, she seems to have been engaged in. It's not to take your voice. It's to silence lies that are, you know, harmful lies. So, hmm, the jury clearly found that these were lies. So, yeah, you've already agreed you don't have a right to that. So, yeah. Oh. And her choice of language is very dramatic. It's very, and that's very much in keeping with Dr. Curry's diagnosis. Uh, you know, this sort of overly flowery, flowery language. Most people might have just said it's, you know, he sued me to shut me up. And, but yeah. When we come back, inside the allegations. Which is a need for conflict. Which is a need for violence. The Depp team argued that you were the abuser that you instigated physical violence. I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. As I testified to, if it meant the difference, 
between a broken nose or a, a, a sore cheek, I would do it. Except she only testified, she testified that she only hit him the one time. So now she's saying that she would respond to violence with violence because she needed to, which sounds like more than once. People lined the streets waiting for a glimpse of them, these two movie actors. Their cars pulling up not to a red carpet, but to a Virginia courthouse. What did you see out the window of that car? Every single day I passed city blocks lined with people holding signs saying things that I couldn't repeat on television. And they had to establish barricades to protect me so I could drive into a protected entrance of the courthouse. Every single day that's how I walked in the court. Okay, so let's talk about this. Um, there were certainly a few signs of that, you know, were anti-Amber. But I didn't see any that were threatening to Amber, which she claims. Or, you know, talking about burn the witch or anything like that. I didn't see anything like that. Stuff like the heard you were a liar, which they did have a clip of there. Yeah, there were absolutely, uh, you know, there was absolutely sort of some stuff like that. And it was about a half a percent of the signs that I saw. Half a percent. Like, I would see one or two in a crowd of people. Because most people weren't there for Amber. They just weren't. People didn't honestly give a crap about her overall. What they did care about it was Johnny Depp. People were there because they wanted to see Johnny Depp. They wanted to support him. And especially towards the end of the uh, the trial, you had people packing the street going, you know, and wanting to show support. So what I saw tons of signs of were, you know, we love you, Johnny, justice for Johnny Depp. Um, you know, these kinds of things. People with hand-drawn signs with alpacas. The guy who actually brought live alpacas. Um, that sort of stuff. As a, It was a pretty friendly crowd. Most people, you know, if they're there and they're going to hold up any sort of sign, they're holding up a sign in support of Depp. Um, I certainly didn't see anybody threatening her. And I will also note, um, it was basically a block and a half of people. Uh, it's this one corner where people were lined up and out in front of the courthouse. And so there's not that there's not blocks and blocks and blocks. There's just this short little place and people would wait there for when he's leaving. This is really not accurate in the slightest. Um, and I see, Hey, uh, that's awesome on the handsome leather goods. Uh, fill the leather guy. I will have to check that out uh, later. That sounds cool. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, just ridiculous. Um, in the lineup, I saw basically, you know, there were a few Amber supporters, but I didn't see anybody with like, you know, death to Amber anything. Um, I saw actually about as many people with anti-Amber signs as with pro-Amber signs. So, yeah, it's... Uh, and thank you for the, uh, the new membership there. Um, yeah, I... I don't see what she was saying there. And quite frank, like the secured entrance, they're going to have the secured entrance for anybody famous. Uh, whether or not, I mean, they do the same thing for like accused killers. If they're, you know, Rittenhouse had a, a secured route in. And it's not because, you know, of anything like that. But Johnny Depp had the same route in. It's because they don't, the, you know, the courthouse doesn't want the news to be saying, you know, that either of these people got hurt. So you're not special. They had the same stuff there for Johnny Depp. And quite frankly, there was also, you know, security and so forth for uh, watching for, uh, you know, the lawyers. The lawyers, uh, they didn't go through the secured entrance, but they did have uh, sort of deputies watching them at times. Uh, 
Somebody's saying, did I see that they edited out a big slip? I did see that video. Um, I will let people watch that elsewhere because I was not the person who caught that. But you can, uh, Spidey at uh, Behavioral Analysts uh, spotted that, or at least he's one of the people who spotted that. And uh, yeah, he, he did excellent work on that. Uh, Joy, thank you for the new membership. Somebody's saying, do you do I think she called up Burn the Witch and Unalive Amber to remind folks of JD's texts? Um, maybe. I think she just can't help herself. Um, I think she just... Things come out of her mouth, and whether or not they're accurate is kind of anybody's guess. Uh, it's hard to make sense of what Amber Heard says. Thanks, if your perspective is from a straight-thinking person, she won't make sense because her reality is warped. Um, I think that there's a certain amount to that. I think she's convincing herself of what's going on there. All right, let's keep going here. There were more people waiting for her inside, packing the courtroom and watching from home. Amber's lawyers had fought to keep TV cameras out, but lost. I didn't want this to be a... I just got to go back there just to see, is this one of the days I was there? Every single day, that's how I was trial. I didn't want it to be a part of the public record. Oh. People protected entrance ah, of sorry, the I'm really uh, boomerang it up here day, as I try to... In the court. There were more people waiting for her inside, packing the courtroom. All right. This, I think this is one of the days I was not there, sadly. But uh, yeah, the courthouse was pretty much all, or the courtroom was pretty much always packed. Uh, actually, this might be one of the very earliest days because I don't see uh, Izzy there either. And it's certainly not, uh, they've got all the rows. So it's not when they cleared that front row and watching from home. Amber's lawyers had fought to keep TV cameras out, but lost. I didn't want this to be a thing. I didn't want it to be a trial. I didn't want it to be a part of the public record. But when someone sues you, you don't really have a choice. With the burden of proof on him, John... Here's the thing, though. If it wasn't televised, she'd be able to do these interviews and tell these stories. And you, the viewer at home, and me here none of us would be able to say, hey, that's not true. Hey, that's not what happened. And in fact, so far, we've been saying, hey, that's not what happened a whole bunch of times, right? Um, so not televising it would have been a great advantage to her because she's really trying to rely on this media narrative that she was able to, uh, to control. Unfortunately, that media narrative escaped her because she wasn't able to control what people were seeing and what people were noticing. So, and you know, if you're just trying to keep this out of the public eye, why are you here? Why are you doing the interview? Johnny Depp made his case first. To prove defamation, his lawyers needed to show that Amber's claims of abuse were false and had hurt his career. Mr. Depp, have you ever physically assaulted Miss Heard? Never. Have you ever sexually assaulted Miss Heard? Never. Certainly not. What have you lost as a result of Ms. Heard making these allegations against you? Nothing less than everything. Depp said there was an abuser in the courtroom, but it wasn't him. It was Amber. And that nothing less than everything was really powerful uh, testimony. And I see we've got Scott in the chat. He's going to be joining me tomorrow. And, you know, we were both there in the lineup and in the... Uh, you know, in the courtroom. So when he says, you know, his note about nobody was allowed to speak is exactly right. The bailiffs were not messing around. They would have thrown people out in a hot second. Uh, but he'll be joining me tomorrow. I want you guys to check that out as well. If you, you know, if you're around, because uh, yeah, we're going to be sort of reminiscing a little bit about, uh, about our experiences there. She's a need for conflict. She's a need for violence. It erupts out of nowhere. Depp described a particularly violent fight they had when he was filming in Australia. He said Amber threw a vodka bottle at him. And it made contact and shattered uh, everywhere. And then I looked down and realized that the, the, the tip of my finger had been severed. Depp's attorney showed the jury photos of injuries they said Amber had inflicted on Depp and asked members of his security staff to tell the jury what they'd seen. 
I heard and saw a closed fist um, contact Mr. Depp in the left side of his face. And whose fist was that? That was Miss Heard's fist, Amber Heard's fist. The Depp team argued. Yeah, and it's really frustrating to watch. Like it's it's actually hard to watch some of this. Just um, both because we're getting this really false portrayal, but also, um, I mean, it's just tough. Uh, I also don't like how they're interspersing this with all this sort of court, co you know, court footage and so and commentary. Like, show us the interview. I'm getting, I guess that the interview is like only five minutes long, but this is such a critical thing in terms of truth and the honesty of the media. So which parts are you dropping here? What? Because once you do this, we can't see if there was 20 minutes cut out. Um, and I see a lot of people are noting that parts were cut from this, from the short clips. I haven't watched the short clips, so I can't comment too much on that. Uh, I have seen a whole lot of people... Uh, you know, sort of noting that. Uh, so that is very much a a possibility or a, a certainty here. Uh, somebody saying it's reported Depp spent about five, I'm guessing that's five million in legal fees. Uh, I think five million is probably low. Uh, I think that's a low estimate. And thank you for the, uh, the $10. It's much appreciated. All right, let's keep going. And I guess here's some more honest answers. You, that you were the abuser, that you instigated physical violence, did you? I never had to instigate it, I responded to it. When you're living in violence and it becomes normal, as I testified to, you have to adapt, you adopt strategies to cope with it. If, and if it meant, as I testified to, if it meant the difference between a broken nose or a, a, a sore cheek, I would do it. What about the way? Except that's not what you testified to. You testified that you used no violence except for this one time. So now your story is changing. Hmm. Funny thing about that. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, she's saying she's just using responsive violence and yeah. Uh that's her story keeps changing. It's a, it's a moving target. Witnesses who said they have seen you instigate physical violence. Did they all come in and lie in court? I'm, you know, less interested in sitting here, you know, relitigating it with you. I am not here to call any of his witnesses, any names. I'm not here to do that. I'm, I'm here to just kind of talk about it from what it felt like for me as a person who sat there. There was one more voice Depp's legal team wanted the jury to hear, Amber's. They had audio recordings of the couple talking about how Amber sometimes got physical. I'm gonna smack my ear again. And it resounds in my brain. You like that? I love you. Huh? I love you, I'm sorry. And that I love you, I'm sorry, after, you know, uh, him saying don't hit me is very much how, uh, that's how abusers talk. Like the, you know, they apologize for it. They have these honeymoon moments. And we didn't hear that in the recordings from Depp. We didn't hear the same thing. We just, you know, it's, and I don't know how many uh, of the people here have ever been smacked in the ear like that. It's actually really, really painful. And if you it's if you do it wrong or if you do it right, depending on what you're talking about, you can cause permanent damage there. Um, that's not something trivial. That is not something that I consider to be um, like a low end kind of a, attack. That is very potentially damaging and potentially permanently damaging. Keep in mind. Depp's an actor. Uh, you mess with his hearing. I mean, that's that's a big deal. Uh, Apple Pie, thank you for the uh, for the puppies and for the coverage and insight. Um, the next drink I poured myself is a pickleback. So 
Um, here's hoping she doesn't make me feel like I need it because uh, those are fun but rough. In another recording, Amber was less apologetic. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not deck you. I was hitting you. There are tapes in which you acknowledge hitting. There are tapes in which you say, I started the fight. I know much has been made of, of these audio tapes. And as I testified on the stand, what you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. It was evidence of a negotiation of how to talk about that with your abuser. But I am looking at a transcript that says, he says, you start physical fights and you say, I did start a physical fight. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. That you're just telling me today, I never started a physical fight and here you are on tape saying you did. As I testified on the stand about this, is that when your life is at risk, not only will you take the blame for things that you shouldn't take the blame for, but when you're in an abusive dynamic, psychologically, emotionally, and physically, you don't have the luxury of saying, hey, this is black and white, because it's anything but when you're living in it. He says he... Now, as a lot of people have pointed out, this is a place where they cut stuff out, but hey, Rob, welcome. Hey, guys, I'm making the rounds today. I was going to say, you've been on every stream pretty much today. So the, the, <laughs> the invites, I just I I like just jumping around and giving help to whoever needs it in whatever moment they need the help. You are a, a popular guy. Uh, you were just on. Uh, I Debbie Davis, Debbie Davis. Yes. So Debbie Davis, for those who don't remember, Debbie Davis was the attorney. You guys might have seen a viral video go around at some point in time where um, a prosecutor is prosecuting a follow up on a domestic violence case. And during the middle of that discussion, I will say DV. That's my bad. A DV case, middle of the discussion, um, uh, she asks uh, and inquires, um, I think that they might be in the same room. I saw that. Oh, I. That is Debbie Davis. Wow. Okay. So that's pretty. She's got a channel now. She has a channel now. And she just prosecuted a case last week um, involving some nefarious contact by a dad uh, with the dad's child um and i was watching i would watch live and i was helping her um helping her just with some of the arguments like i would be watching live and texting her and doing discussion with her after her days in court trying to help her figure out how to go about it next that is pretty awesome uh yeah i i'd love to talk to her about that because that was a moment that everybody spotted and uh that that judge is kind of an interesting character as well, although she probably can't comment on the judge. Uh, that that's kind of a risky move to comment on a judge's behavior. Yeah. Just a bit. Uh, or at least when it's a judge who practices or who you practice in front of. But uh no, that is that's really cool. Um we're at about a third of the way in, and my sobriety is going to be in peril if this continues at the uh direction it's going it's pretty bad right is this your first you you came into this without watching any of it right i haven't watched any of it um, oh oh my my poor friend you poor soul i i've watched a few little clips that were sort of shared on twitter that i couldn't avoid um but yeah she's uh she, she's already said several things that are just straight up lies um how many burn the witch signs did you see None, actually. And I actually pulled the, I actually pulled the, have you pulled the map up yet? I haven't pulled the map up, but I, oh, I did mention that. that it's just this little corner, right? That's where everybody was. Well, not even that, but remember where, remember where they drove in? They drove in on Judicial Drive. Yeah. That's how they entered the courthouse, which is a 300 yard block before they get to the gate. That's it. And they yeah. had, they had big old uh, gates blocking people away from that. So there was not a single sign that said anything negative about Amber Heard. Every sign was actually pro Johnny Depp, just not negative Amber Heard. I saw like a couple of, but they weren't like, they weren't like, you know, you know, violent signs. They were just like Amber Heard is a liar. I saw like a couple yeah. of those yeah. on some like, and they weren't there like every day. There were days that there were just no signs like that. It's, it's so egregious how she just straight up lies about that. And anybody who was out there can be like, no, that is not actually what happened. Uh, they managed to find for this, uh, 
for this interview, they found a little bit of like a video clip where they found two signs, but none of them said any of the violent stuff that Amber is claiming. They just said that she was uh, that she was lying. So, yeah. All right. And people are saying I have to watch some of the earlier clips because they cut some important responses. We just finished seeing them say uh, this little bit where I did see the video where they cut out the uh, they cut out her saying, you know, uh, you know, if you're a victim, you don't have the resources that you or I have. Um, and, you know, Spidey jumped on that. And it's really interesting that they thought that that bit was sufficiently good to show in clips before the main interview. And then they cut it on the main day like that. They really, at this point, I think they should release just the raw, you know, one unedited cut of the interview just to, so that you can see, but yeah. Uh, and I'm seeing watch out for copyright claims from NBC. Uh, this I think would be pretty squarely into fair dealing. I've got some people in the chat who are complaining that I'm cutting in. Um, that's because this is what we do here. We're offering commentary. This is not intended to be a substitute for the main thing. Cause if you want to watch the main thing, you'd want to watch it without me yammering. Uh, you're here to watch me yammer, and I'm I'm going to interrupt this at several points. Yeah. All right. So I see people noting reporting can be deadly for victims. Goal is to support victim until they have a safe place uh, to exit or can report it. Uh, omitted essay there, calculated dodge. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see more services to help people get out of these situations. You know, more mm -hmm. shelters, more... And that's shelters for both men and women because the shelters for women are underfunded. The shelters for men are basically non-existent in most places. So, yeah. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, that face is kind of creeping me out. <laughs> the one that I stopped on here. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. Let's, that's, let's, let's get out of that face, please. That's all the teeth. Never hit you. Never. Is that a lie? Yes, it is. He says he's never struck any woman. His lawyers argued at trial. None of his other prior relationships, not one woman has come forward and said he physically hit them. You were the only one. Look what happened to me when I came forward. How would they have known that? Are you saying that all of these women, you know, were sitting there and A, that none of them are as brave as you and B, that they all would have known what's going to happen when you came forward? Yep. You're saying they all had time machines? Yep. She's now cooler than Kate Moss. And she's <laughs> cooler than Vanessa Power Parodies. And the other thing is, like, the, the last sentence which she answers, do you realize that was the only real answer she gave the entire interview? Yes. Like, when it was like, you're saying he never hit you. What was it? You said that he hit you. Do you stand by that? And she was like, yes. Like, that was the only time she ever actually gave an answer. Yeah, like right at the outset, she's asked, you know, why did you come on this show? Was it, you know, and sh the interviewer sort of gives her a bunch of possibilities, including vindictive. And she says, well, it certainly wasn't vindictive. And the, here's why. It's like, <laughs> well, then what was it? You didn't actually <laughs> answer that. And I'm guessing it's bags of money. Um, and also... Yes, vindictive, but vindictive, <laughs> and also exactly the thing you just focused in on. <laughs> but it, you know, she never actually gives a reason, right? Because of course, she can't. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, so frustrating. Oh, and people are warning that uh, apparently DUI guy got a copyright strike on this one. So I guess we'll see how it goes. But if they want to strike we'll it, just keep. We'll just keep talking. We'll just just keep talking. Keep talking, Ian. <laughs> For as much of it as you can. Well, and I mean, if they want to strike this, they're in the wrong and I'll do what I can to fight back. But, uh, yeah. Would you? Coming up. I felt so embarrassed that he could kick me to the ground in front of people. As you sit here today, do you stand by your testimony and your accusations against Johnny Depp about abuse? Of course. And I will to my dying day. When Dateline continues. 
Dun 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 dun. <laughs> you have to talk. You have to talk. You have to talk over the intro. Is talk this, over the intro. Talk over the intro. The, talk over the intro. Talk over the intro. Talk over the intro. That's stuff that's patented and copyrighted. Day by day, the surprises just keep coming in this trial. But for all the intense curiosity, this was not the first time That's Amber really Heard well and Johnny line. Depp faced off in court. There was another trial dealt with the same substantive issues, handled differently by a, a judge instead of a jury. Johnny Depp sued The Sun, a British tabloid, over an article it published describing him as a wife beater. The case went to trial two years ago in the UK. There were no cameras in court. The and judge the ruling- in that case found that... All right, let's talk a little bit about that ruling. And you know what? Uh, there's people who are going to cover it better than I have because I deliberately didn't read too much of the UK stuff because I wanted to focus on this one. Uh, but Black Belt Barrister goes through it in some incredible detail. Oh, and, yeah. um, you know, uh, Andrea goes through it in a lot of detail. I'm forgetting her last name because I'm Burkhart. Andrea Burkhart mm-hmm. goes through it in some incredible detail. But one thing that really strikes me when I looked at, you know, just skimming that decision was just how much they how much energy they put in that decision. The judge on uh, on her having donated the money and how that indicated that she had no financial incentive and that she was pure of heart and super credible. Well, um, do you remember what they said about her donating that money at trial hmm i'm pretty sure i remember a back and forth between her and ms vasquez where she kept saying yes and ms vasquez kept saying no my words i chose the word donated and you keep saying yes i pledged it um yeah yeah and then she uses the same lame excuse of it's like buying a house i'm like look when you buy a house at least you sign a piece of paper. You didn't even do that in this case. So go see you later. And I mean, there was, you know, what is it? Thunder. And uh, was that before or after the thunder that came in during? uh... Oh, that was before. That was, that was, that was after that was one of her closing lines of that day, but the thunder had come in beforehand. It was the light beam and then the thunder. And it was like Camille Vasquez just like held up the hammer and was like, give me lightning. (laughs) <laughs> well, that was it's just such an unreal moment in that uh but yeah it's so when you look yeah. at the uk you know verdict it was very heavily relying on evidence that we now know to be false and that um that to me says that it's not a great verdict you know in terms of like why didn't they follow the same decision oh right because now they know that that was bs and you know maybe if the jury had been bs the same way on this one they would have gone for it but the judge did not seem to catch that uh litigation privilege versus canada absolute privilege so that's all you that's kind of a complicated one so absolute privilege for stuff in court is basically um you cannot be defend like your statements in court can't be defamatory because they are an absolute privilege. Uh, and the reason, I mean, if you lie in court, they can be perjury, but the idea is that you don't want people to be shaping their testimony in court about worrying about lawsuits. Mm -hmm. So there's a few places where you have absolute privilege and the absolute privilege is, uh, a pretty powerful, uh, shield to hide behind because it's absolute. Um, Litigation privilege, we also have litigation privilege here, but that's kind of a different thing because litigation privilege is usually things like, uh, you know, let's say Rob and I were opposing counsel on a file and, you know, I send him an offer that basically says uh, we will settle this for $10,000. And Rob then wants to use that against me in court. He probably can't because of, you know, various forms of privilege that cover those negotiations, you know, resolution privilege and that kind of thing. So there's all sorts of litigation privileges in that. uh, But uh, can any charges be filed against Amber Heard for her abuse? Potentially. No, No, statute of limitations, unless it's another jurisdiction. In the U.S., no. Statute of limitations, any abusive actions, well past that time. I think Do we know about some, Australia? 
Yeah. Because yeah. uh, in Canada, they could go after her until the end of time. Uh, yeah. Apparently Australia too, right? Didn't you say that? I, I thought somebody had said that, but I don't know for certain. So, I mean, it's certainly possible, but if Australia... Yeah, we'll just have to see on that. And somebody's saying Farron got a uh, a strike for her video. Uh, that's concerning. But, uh, oh well, if they're giving out uh, improper strikes, then uh, that's on them. We'll just have to sort of go from there. All right. Uh, let's keep going here. So somebody's saying Australia, same as Canada, just... Uh, permanently. What are my thoughts on Depp's team filing an injunction against Amber Heard? I think it's unlikely um, for a couple of reasons. First, um, the first, it's very difficult to get an injunction on speech in the United States. It'd be much easier if it was in Canada. Um, and hey, not much. <laughs> the uh, but the other thing is that I suspect that. What we've heard is that Depp doesn't really want to. Um, I don't think he's going to want to throw her in jail. And if she's got no money and you've got an injunction, the only way the injunction gets enforced is throwing her in jail. I don't think Depp wants that. So that, um, you know, that's my read on that. I can't say for certain. Any thoughts there? I mean, the temporary injunction stuff, the law on prior restraints of speech is pretty serious in the U.S. You have to be really, 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 really high up on. Um, hmm. You have to be really high up on their hit list uh, and you have to do some really egregious violations and really show that you are going to make an egregious violation. Oh, and so, you I guy in the chat. Uh, you know what? If they're going to hit me with a copyright strike. I'm already too far in, but I mean, I think that this kind of commentary is well within fair dealing, but that doesn't necessarily mean NBI or NBC is going to listen to that. Um, yeah. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? And Australia apparently has a separate wet, uh, separate law against using glass as a weapon. Oh, that's uh, weird. It is. And it isn't because Australia actually had a run of it. And, um, Glassing is incredibly nasty. Uh, where it like where it usually comes up is where people are smashing a glass into somebody's face, and yeah, and that causes like permanent lifelong injuries. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and yeah, so they had a run of it, and then it went sort of uh, less. Uh, it became less. But it would make sense that they might have passed a law for that. Rob, your reaction when uh, the Dep team brought up the bed? Um, it, my reaction was excited, but it was nothing compared to me reacting or me just watching the rest of all of my all of my new friends reacting to that as well. Um, there's a stitch of it, and it's watching them all react to that. And Emily D. Baker is just sitting here going, the knife for the bed, the knife for the bed, the knife for the bed. And then she just like starts pumping. Her fist. <laughs> it was it was one of the coolest moments I can think of. Oh, yeah. That was such a, an amazing uh, little moment there. Oh, uh, and what, what you guys didn't know. Sorry. I'm sorry, Ian. What you didn't know, and this is actually really cool. Ian was at my dining room table while <laughs> that was happening. And Ian, like the bed stuff comes up and December 15th comes up. And Ian looks up from the camera and I'm like making food. And Ian goes, Rob get your ass over here and he just, like <laughs> yells at me to come over it was really fun and uh somebody's saying do we think that if amber heard keeps this up that johnny depp may make her pay the judgment instead of trying to work out a negotiation or instead of suing again i don't know that'll be up to him and what he wants to do but uh if i was him i'd make her pay <laughs> like yeah and glassing common at clubs, drunk people throwing. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys have ever watched, uh, what is it, Train Spotting, that moment where I think it's Begbie's the character uh, uh, tosses the glass over the side. That's another example of you know glassing. And uh, yeah, 
and people streaming it live, uh, does it make a difference? It can. Um, I suspect NBC is going to have been a little bit heavy on the enforcement um, on the day of. They might still, who knows, they might, uh, you know, you know, might hit with a strike. Yeah, and somebody noting glassing is not just smashing in the face, aggravating factor that covers throwing glass, utilizing it as a weapon, or potentially even causing someone to fall on glass. That last oh. one, really interesting, because uh, that's something that happens a lot in bars, like in bar fights okay. and so forth. Um, two idiots at a shady bar get into a fight, and they go, let's take this outside, and they go out into the alley. Well, what have been, people been doing in that alley all night? You know, smashing bottles. And some of the injuries you see on that can sometimes be uh, pretty epic. And that's one of the things that sort of ties into Amber's testimony, because Amber's testifying about how she's being walked barefoot across this broken glass. Uh, the injuries you get from bottle glass are pretty serious. So, yeah. Uh, have we seen the video of a judge fighting an attorney? I've heard of this. I haven't watched it. Uh, you have. What do you think? What would you do if the judge provoked you to fight? I would not fight a judge. Um, mm -mm. Mm -mm. If a judge mm -mm. came after me with fists up, I'd just be sitting there. I would be folding my fists behind my back. And I'd just, you know, go until I pass out or the sheriff steps in. Like, I am not, I am not throwing a single hand back because the way you win that fight is not in the fist fight. There is no winning that fist fight. Because if you get knocked, you know, if you knock out the judge, your career is probably over. Um, even if he took six or seven punches at you first. Um, yep. Especially because here in Canada, we don't have videotaped courtrooms. So my word against the judge is I want that judge coming out spotless. Not even an Amber Heard style makeup mark. So... <laughs> yes, although Amica Cream apparently would solve it. Oh, God. Why? And I see people, why the mainstream media pro Amber Heard support House and Habit was booted off uh, Instagram the same day that LawTube accounts were throttled. What agenda does supporting Amber Heard serve? Um, I think part of it is that uh, the media sort of starts out with a narrative, right? And the narrative... Uh, basically goes and says, hey, here's what we say happened. And they started off with, they said Amber Heard was the victim. And so the problem with that is that they don't really want to say that things are, uh, are that they were wrong. And so they're going to double down. And some of the press releases I saw, like some of the press statements I saw looked like they were written by a PR firm. So that's the other thing is that media, media often is lazy. And um, so if they get written like a pre-written piece, they will sometimes run it, which can be embarrassing for them. If you're wondering why news stories about police activities often look so much like the police press release, it's usually because it's cribbed off the police press release. And war games, the only way to win is not to play. Uh, yep. Somebody was noting that it's Arnica cream, and I know, but Amica cream is the, uh, you know, is sort of the joke about that one. Uh, is there any way to get this woman into a mental hospital? I'm serious. I doubt it. Um, she is, you can have all sorts of mental illness that does not get you into a mental hospital. The test for that is pretty serious, and it should be, because, you know, you're talking about people being locked up against their will, right? We don't want that happening, happening light. Lightly. To me, it appears Amber Heard plotted and took notes for the drama from the beginning of the Johnny Depp relationship. She certainly took a lot of pictures, didn't she? Just a few. Uh, and of weird things like, you know, the, you know, hi him sitting there passed out. 85,000 photos, guys, in the chat. 85,000 photos is what they pulled off of her phone. Every photo that, that was shown in trial of her alleged abuse, um, Every single photo that you saw are all of the photos that were pulled from that phone that show any of it. So out of 85,000 photos. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I have been to plenty of parties where people have passed out and I've never felt the urge to take a picture of a single one of them. 
because I like my friends and I don't want to be a jerk to them. Um, if my wife had ever passed out from drinking, and I'm not going to say whether or not, I would not take a picture of it and show it to people. Like that is that would be on the last of my list of concerns. Yeah. Oh well, let's continue with this tire fire. Most of Amber Heard's allegations of abuse were substantially true. Johnny Depp has lost his legal battle with a British tabloid. We prevailed overwhelmingly. You didn't. You the jury a in the U.S. trial wasn't allowed to hear about that judgment. And Amber says that by the time she got up to tell her side of the story, I do. The court of public opinion here had already turned against her. After three and a half weeks, I took the stand and saw the courtroom packed full of Captain Jack Sparrow fans who were vocal, energized, who had came, come from all ends of the world. We've been here. You know that Captain Jack Sparrow isn't a real person, right? Um, I mean, yeah. certainly there were Johnny Depp fans. There were also Amber Heard fans in that crowd. And I mean, I came to the courthouse later where a lot of people had, you know, had seen the testimony and had come to conclusions. But there were Amber Heard fans there. They weren't, you know, as I said, they were trying to keep it on the down low, but they were there. And uh, somebody saying, I'm glad you got it to work. That was Rob's doing. So thank you to Rob. Uh, mm -hmm. That that was a, a huge help here. And so, what what if anyone's watching from YouTube, it was not NBC. The source of this video was not NBC. So. So you have saved my sanity. Excellent. Uh, yeah, the there were people from all over the place. There were somebody from Malta, I think it was. Um, I thought, oh, I yeah. Oh, the Malta, the Malta, the Malta mom and the mom and daughter, the the ones that were the fighters. Yep, and that was uh, interesting on the last day because they had it was a real Sophie's Choice situation as to which one got in. So that was uh, tense. Uh, somebody saying that their dad and them discussed it after they tuned into Spidey Stream and one of the first things they've agreed on in years. Wow. Well, Amber Heard. Bringing families together by lying blatantly. Uh, watch Spidey with y'all today, late to the stream. What videos got deleted or hit? Um, we don't know. We don't know. We're still sort of figuring that out, but we're forging ahead anyway because uh, this is pretty clearly fair dealing. So, or fair use for those in the States. Uh, different terms, but similar concepts. And somebody was asking, did we see the signs uh, she talked about or did she make it up? Uh, she made it up. Yep. And there's very few things that I'm going to come out and say were unequivocally a lie. That one was one of them. And Ian will back me on that. Absolutely. 100%. That was just complete. That's a complete fabrication. She lied to the, you know, lied to everybody there. The law patrol. Glassing was reactionary. Same as our one punch laws. If you hit someone and they die from striking their head or neck on the way down. Up to life sentence. Wow. Doesn't help the Australian uh, reputation for being drunks. Yeah. And I mean, those kinds of, uh, what is it? Those kinds of uh, laws just as a reactionary law. I hate those. So I hate when they pass a law to try to fix something that just happened. Uh, we also agree that she needs help and that people will help her get it. Um, and people that will help her get it. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think unfortunately she's probably not ready to uh, to get help, and I think that um, that unfortunately she's in a situation where she's going to surround herself with people who will just tell her what she wants to hear. Uh, you're always clear and reasonable. Love to listen. Well, thank you, and uh, yeah, really appreciate uh, Law Patrol that uh, super chat to clarify all that because that's uh, much appreciated there. Uh, where neither of us are Australian lawyers, and I've never actually even been to Australia, although I'd like to one day. They're all not long. I took two buses, two trains, and I had to walk a half an hour. And the jury saw all Aww. of that. During five days on the stand, Amber told her version of the toxic relationship. She said the physical abuse began when they were first dating and continued throughout their marriage. And I was walking out of the bedroom, slapped me across the face. I turned to look at him and I said, Johnny, you hit me. You just hit me. 
I, I testified on the stand. I got hit for a very long time before I knew how to even try to defend myself. Amber said the abuse usually happened in private, but told the jury Depp once kicked her on a plane in front of his entourage. I felt so embarrassed that he could kick me to the ground in front of people. In all, she described at least I mean, she's very overwrought on all of this, but uh, in terms of like the, you know, is that really what you'd feel is embarrassed when you get kicked? Maybe. Bad pause screen. 12 times when Depp hit her. And he yeah. was punching me, punching me, with a close fist punching me. She said it often happened when he was drunk or on drugs. Right now, as... You sit here today. Do you stand by your testimony and your accusations against Johnny Depp about abuse? Of course, and I will to my dying day. I know what happened to me. I'm here as a survivor. I, to my dying day, will stand by every word of my testimony. That's a bold move, sweetheart. Especially to say that out of court. Because, uh, that is yeah. a bold move, sweetheart. <laughs> I mean, what she got to lose, but uh that's and that that's what I've been saying on other people's streams is is one, you have to prove that it hurts Johnny in some way. And right now Amber's word is worth uh what do you think Amber Heard's uh testimony is worth right now? I wouldn't trade it for, you know, this I wouldn't trade this shot of booze for it. Oh, what are you drinking? Like Malort? Uh no, this is a I got a pickleback lined up. Oh, Oh, nope, I wouldn't trade that for that either. <laughs> hey, I, I prefer that to Malort. I'll tell you that <laughs> for free. Uh, so if a man is falsely accused by a woman and there's no evidence uh, one way or another, what happens if it goes to trial? Is it just testimony versus testimony? Well, first, testimony is evidence. Yes. In fact, it's the most common form of evidence. Um, and yeah, I mean, you go through it and you the court evaluates it. Uh, if it's a criminal trial, the standard is proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So, uh, you know, it's uh, a situation where they'd have to determine that it was proven beyond a reasonable doubt, even without corroborating evidence. But that happens all the time. Uh, people are convicted on he said, she said all the time. And yes, Scott Cardinal did a view of him walking around the area and a map around, of the area around the courthouse. I have seen it. It's an excellent video. So check it out, Scott Cardinal. Uh, he's got a channel there. He does a lot of archaeological stuff, but he is a master storyteller. And yeah, he he does a... I, I watched that video and I was like, I am not doing a video about that because he did it better and there's nothing I could do to, you know, to top it. So check that out. And he'll be on the channel uh, tomorrow. So yeah. Oh, and I'm seeing a call that I've got to drink my pickle back here. <laughs> Congrats to Amber on her net worth jumping from negative 8 million to negative 6 million. And that's the thing is if he sues her again, it can, he can maybe push it back to negative 7 million. But is that worth it? So, yeah. Uh, if she would have said that when he drank and got mad and got violent, I would have been much more apt to believe her as I was a child and I saw my uncle deck his wife. Sorry to hear that. I was eight. Remember that night? I'm 51. Yep. Uh, also, very important safety tip. Malort is awful. Don't let anyone say otherwise. Uh, I will tell you that uh, my experience with Malort was somebody poured a, uh, you know, a shot of Malort for me, slid it over. I lifted it up and went, that's not happening and just let it back because uh it seems like the worst thing that is out there all right so i got a call that i gotta uh oh good for you good man good for you good for you give me i'm gonna be back in five minutes i want to check something out real quick all right and I really do like the uh, the pickle juice uh, sort of finish there. All right, let's uh, keep going here. To support her allegations, her attorney showed photos of injuries they said were caused by Depp. 
One alleged beating happened in 2015 before Amber appeared on The Late Late Show with James Corden. Exhibit 16. A makeup artist saw Amber the day of the alleged incident and said she didn't see any injuries. But the next day... She had a discoloration here under both eyes and on the bridge of the, and the, bridge of the nose. Uh, and she had what I would call a split lip. If I witness... A nurse testified she saw Amber's bloody lip. Now, wouldn't that be odd to not see the injuries on the day of, but then to see them the day after? That's kind of weird. Um, somebody saying, uh, can you get an injunction? Uh, maybe. It's doubtful. It's a hard test to get an injunction, although it was a hard test to win this case in the first place. But um, I don't think it's likely. Uh, part one of three. For a few years, every Monday, Tuesday night uh, news, we'd hear a story about somebody requiring plastic surgery due to a glass in the face. Yep. Um, they got Amber out of Australia because this was in the middle of a mass media push to stop glass attacks. Our cop wouldn't have taken any of their celebrity nonsense to stand down. They have a reputation of bang, 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 and stop and we'll shoot. Um, so they're police is what you're saying. I'm going to get detective seeds on my uh, <laughs> my butt for comments like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I... Getting her out of Australia might have been a sensible move, but it might have just been to get her away from Depp, right? To be like, you can't keep cutting his fingers off. Uh, did I see death to Amber Heard slash burn the witch signs? No, um, I didn't see any death to anybody signs. So uh, that I think is complete uh, nonsense. Really defensive of her ego. I think that's what this is about. The thing she really doesn't want is for us to forget that she exists. So, yeah. Uh, I suggest for anyone who has time, watch the movie Syrup. Amber's character is un as unlikable as Amber herself. Why would I want to do that to myself? Pickle juice is great to pre prevent dehydration. Um, it is. It's actually really fantastic. Uh, thanks for the stream tonight. This was so Amber Heard biased. I'm so mad. It makes me want to cover myself with broken glass. And the electrolytes and pickle juice help prevent hangovers. Uh, Caesars are great for hangover prevention. I think that they are fantastic. Um, I mean, the problem, I think her pictures might have been really helpful to her if it wasn't for the fact that we have evidence that pretty clearly shows at least one of those pictures was manipulated. Um, and I see Nate, the lawyers edited the interview was blocked. They're probably going on a striking uh, rampage. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, but I mean, once you edit one picture, even if it's only one picture, it makes all the pictures you want to tender uh, really suspect, right? Because how do you know the others aren't edited? So when we have these details about these pictures, uh, sorry, you ruined that. Uh, I'm not going to speculate too much on that one. I'll, I'll leave that to, uh, to the viewers for that one. All right, let's keep going. And she told you that that was a result of um, the altercation with Mr. Depp, right? And Amber's sister took the stand and told the story of one fight that she said included Depp hitting her, something Depp denies. He comes up behind me, strikes me in the back, kind of just somewhere over here. He strikes me in the back. I hear Amber shout, don't hit my sister. She smacks him, lands one, and then he grabbed Amber by the hair with one hand and was whacking her repeatedly in the face with the other. Mr. Depp, we've talked about this. Uh, Amber's side also played its own snip. So I just want to say um, one of the things that I really like that came out of this particular uh, trial, uh, there's that wonderful uh, shot that was taken by, uh, uh, I think it's Getty Images. I'm not certain about that. But um, that shows Whitney in the uh, the gallery there. And she's got the most sour expression on her face. And there I am in the background just looking at the jury. But she's got the most angry, sour expression. It's funny. Uh, if reversed, no one would dare interview him? Absolutely. Um, if it was reversed is that, uh, you know, he'd be... He'd be in a cell, I'm suspecting. Uh, Caesars are my favorite on the giveaway that your Canadian is ordering a Ryan Ginger. Uh, yes, although caution. Um... I have had very poor luck ordering Caesars in the United States. Um, the worst Caesar I've ever had was at a place in Vegas. 
and it cost me $16. One six dollars for a Caesar, and it was the worst, most pathetic Caesar on the planet. Um, so if you're ever in Vegas and you happen to be anywhere, don't order a Caesar because it might be the place that I went to. Um, and yeah, I was feeling a little homesick, which is why I was willing to spend the money. It was such a mistake. Uh, fair enough. Uh, next up on the uh, shot list is I've got some tequila here, so we'll see how this goes. It wasn't a salad. It was a Caesar, the beverage, which is uh, vodka and clamato and spices and so forth. To uh, So it's kind of like a Bloody Mary, but made with clamato. Um, it horrifies a lot of Americans. Thank you for the hello and thank you for the uh, the five dollar super chat there. All right, let's keep going and see what's uh, what's going on there. Bits of audio. Amber talking to Depp about oh, acts yes, of violence. Are. Put your cigarettes out on someone else. You have consequences for your actions. That's it. Shut up, fat ass. A week prior, after you beat the out of me. What happened? Then there was this video. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. That's crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Have you drunk this whole thing this morning? You would agree that you were violent in that clip, correct? Um, clearly I was having a bad time. Yes, you didn't I, react I did assault um, a couple of cabins. But I did not touch Miss Heard. You you poured yourself a um, a mega pint of red wine, correct? A mega pint. <laughs> yeah. I poured myself a large glass of wine. Right. <laughs> I I love his expression. There is just that, uh, you know, a mega pint. Hmm. Uh, do I think he could successfully sue one of these media outlets that keep pushing pro Amber stories? I don't think he can sue over the interview. I, at least not that I, anything in that I've seen here. Um, looking at the LCBO, that's your first mistake. Ontario's liquor stores are terrible. Um, looking for the canned Caesars today. All I could find is off brand ones. I didn't dare try those. Yeah, no, that's uh that's a bad, you know, bad, uh, aspect there. Um, yeah, for people who don't know, in Ontario, the liquor stores are all run by the government. And so this is the worst thing. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, I, I went to the Supreme Court of Canada. I won. And then I was trying to find a bottle of booze to celebrate. And it was, uh, it was a rough time because Ontario. Um, here in Alberta... I like the liquor situation a lot better because I like to drink on occasion. Uh, DUI guy trying to say he's shut down for telling drunks to get away with the DUI. Uh, I don't know. I Here's the thing. Uh, defending people on impaired charges is an honorable pursuit because the government should have to prove things. So, no, I'm not, uh, you know... It's the government's job to convict people. It's not the defense lawyer's job. So nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, since the U.S. doesn't have poutine, do we have a do I have a favorite U.S. snack? Fast food. Um, I bet Wisconsin cheese curds would be good enough, and I think you could probably throw together some poutine that would be fantastic without too much trouble. Um, U.S. snacks. Um, you guys have some great burger joints that haven't made it up here. In and Out Burger was amazing. Um, I mean, not like it's not the best burger I've ever had, but for a chain, pretty solid. Uh, will the 624 hearing be televised? Also, did I know that Farron's video? I've heard that now, and I don't know if it will be televised. A mega pint, yes. Uh, there is Clamato in the U.S. Yes, there is. I've found it in this in there, but. Uh, uh, not everybody makes a Caesar in a lot of places in the States. Uh, when they do make a Caesar, they leave out steps. And that is unfortunate. Uh, best bloody, replace half uh, Tom's juice uh, with Guinness. Hmm. 
I may have to try that. All right, let's keep going on here. And remember what Depp said about that fight in Australia when his finger was severed? Amber denied hurting him and said on that trip, she was the real victim. <laughs> Amber went on to describe a harrowing incident of sexual abuse. She testified that Depp assaulted her with a bottle. But I could just feel this pressure. And I remember her it's just not wanting to move because I didn't know if the bottle that he had inside me was broken. In that courtroom, I... Yeah, this that whole round of that uh, day's testimony was not great. Um, she was sobbing, and then she takes not even, like, zero... Like, there's an objection, and by the end of it, she's forgotten that she was crying. Um... Somebody saying I need to try Whataburger. I've never tried Whataburger. Um, so, but she was forgetting that she was crying mid, you know, just in the space of an objection. Uh, that's, that's a problem there. Uh, that is, uh, what is it? Uh, that's kind of their, uh, their issue on that. Uh, if she's sitting there saying, hey, this is, you know, uh, that she's super upset. Normally people don't stop being upset right afterwards. Uh, I see people saying that they got their content deleted. It's a YouTube. I don't think that this is properly a, uh, a violation. So yeah. Uh, moved from uh, GTA to YYC. So Calgary 18 months ago and loving it. Alberta's hunting paradise, loving the collaboration with Rob. Yes. Alberta does have a lot of uh, really nice, uh, uh, wilderness. It's really wonderful to be able to get out there and so forth. Uh, and when she says she doesn't know if it's a broken bottle, I feel like you'd know. Like, I feel like that is something that would be uh, readily apparent. She also testifies that she is getting punched repeatedly with her head on a hard surface. And she's getting... Now, that's the kind of, you know, thing that doesn't leave minor bruising. That's the kind of thing that just absolutely wrecks somebody and, you know, quite often kills them. If you're punching somebody against a, uh, uh, you know, if you're punching somebody against a hard surface like that, people die from that all the time. You actually saw Law Patrol commenting about their one punch uh, laws. Well, that's what that's about. So the fact that she's here and is just surviving is uh, kind of suggests that this is a problem. So when I see a blank super chat, it's probably because these aren't very clear. We type, we pay, we think it went, but no. Yeah, uh, that's sadly on YouTube. I can't fix the YouTube uh, in interface there. So yeah, I'm seeing lots of people warning that I'm going to get a strike. Well, oh well. Um, I guess everybody gets a strike sometime. Uh, Carrying on. I'm testifying about a, about sexual assault and domestic violence next to a jury in front of a whole packed courtroom of people who are expressing their vocal support and disdain for me. Amber. No, they aren't. No, they weren't. Um, nobody was talking because if you talk in that courtroom, the bailiffs would have kicked you out in a hot second. So no, people were not expressing their vocal distaste for you. People were keeping their mouth absolutely shut uh, whenever the jury was in the room. This is BS. This is not the case. Uh, there were some people who were, you know, maybe breathing in or, you know, reacting to things. But, uh, you know, people aren't calling out. We have the video. Like if somebody was shouting out, to say what was going on, um, you think that would have been caught up, you know, picked up on those audio recordings just a little bit? Uh, all right, uh, let's keep going. I'm going to rage. And, uh, hmm. All right, so let's uh, sort of just have a look here. Her had told her story sitting here today now she would be forced to defend it yeah coming exactly, up right what the jury 
ever okay, saw. So There's a, a uh, binder worth of notes binder that were taken notes. by my doctor. Okay. Her notes represented years of okay. what was going wait. on. Wait. Okay, she's saying there's a binder full of notes taken by her doctor. Well, um, wouldn't that mostly be... Like, the way you get that in is you call the doctor. You call the doctor as a witness, and she can testify to all of that, you know. But she can't just tender her notes about what you said. And, you know, because those notes would just be what Amber told the doctor mostly, right? Like, that's how the doctor's going to conclude that there was something going on. So, yeah, that's massive hearsay. Uh, she knew she could get away with telling that bottle story because the only evidence refuting it was inadmissible. I've heard it. No way it happened. I mean, I, I heard her testimony at the time. There was no... It was just implausible. So somebody saying just after the live, but uh, just don't publish this may prevent a strike. Um, that might be a good idea. I might just run this and then take it down. Uh, I need to look very closely at the binder of notes. That might be another uh, another day's worth of uh, looking at that thing. So, yeah, I don't know what the details are. I'm going to have to try to figure out what's going on with that uh, striking business because this is perfectly legitimate commentary. Uh, Amber Heard may be reporting any and all things she can. And uh, psych, hard to say this. Everyone is different, but this looks like a person that re read about trauma and TV. All the buzzwords, no consistency in profile. Absolutely. Um, I had the same feeling of this, is that she's somebody who has looked at a bunch of other people's stories and has sewn them together. And this is actually what you see a lot in these kind of... Uh, in these kinds of, uh, you know, tr false, where there's a false allegation is that people sew together bits that they've heard from other people and then often add in some really extra juicy details. And those extra juicy details are things that usually are an indicator that something is not true. Um, there's just, there's certain kinds of facts that when I hear them in a story, I go, that's not true. This is not being told accurate or accurately. And it might be that there are elements of truth to it, but uh, yes. Oh, thank you. And happy Father's Day. Thank you very much. Um, what is it? Uh, I remember there was that one story, the Virginia Tech thing. And uh, I, you know, one of the issues on that was uh, that she claimed that she was thrown through a glass table. And I, when I heard that, I went, nope, didn't happen. Um, that's not, you know, that's not a, a detail that seems consistent with other sort of, you know, other allegations. And then later enough, sure enough, it was not accurate. Uh, if you weren't sure if the bottle was broken and you were bleeding, well, would you you'd toddle off to the dock, especially if you'd not uh, yet had kids and still wanted to, not something that you would choose to hide even if you wanted to. I mean, it's hard to say what people would do after something like that, but I certainly wouldn't take a sleeping pill if I was worried about that. But people sometimes behave irrationally. Uh, and welcome back, Rob. Uh, people in the chat are asking about the difference between binder and notepad. Did you just cover that clip? I haven't, uh, or she just said you know, that she has this binder full of stuff. And I'm going, you mean that inadmissible hearsay? Well, interesting observation I made earlier. Um, therapists use notepads, not binders. Yep. Binders binders are used as exhibits in court. Also true, yep. Therapists use notepads. Um, attorneys use binders to demonstrate and show evidence in court. And also, uh, did you notice how she quite literally articulated um, the business records exception to hearsay like she used all the words as in contemporaneously taking notes mm. um, trying to get around the first layer of hearsay and perhaps not the second um yeah yeah i mean this that's the thing is you know binders are great for organizing things but like you know i got one of my notepads here this is you know one of the notepads from one of the days of trial and you can see it actually says, you know, your name on the top because <laughs> I borrowed this. 
I say borrowed. I've still got it, so and it's not going to be back. So it's more. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need that bind. I'm gonna need that notepad <laughs> back with uh, uh without all of the the pen marks. Yeah, I gotta soak that and uh, get all that out of there. But uh, and, and, can, and can you get the stickers off of there too? The the Thanksgiving stickers that were in there from my nieces. Oh, I'm pretty sure those I have to return intact. That's. Uh... <laughs> And uh, Wendy's Cafe, thank you for the $10 noting uh, that binder is evidence from the UK trial that her and Elaine tried to get in. Yeah, I, I suspect that's exactly what it is. Is, uh, is that somebody saying, if they strike me, do I still get to keep the Super Chat cash? I think that anything that went in before the claim is mine. I think I don't so. Know. But, uh, I and I Runkle, I suggested this to you in the private chat. And if you're comfortable, I don't know if you are or not. Uh, Joe does the, he does super chats, but he also does the possibility of people sending in chats via Venmo, where if you were to link your Venmo as a pin, people can send in super chats via Venmo, in which case the money goes outside of YouTube and does not get anywhere near anything that YouTube can touch. Um, if so, if you wanted to send in super chats via that method, I think um, that's something we're not going to do for two reasons. One, okay. uh, no Love Venmo it. in Canada Two, uh, somebody should warn Joe, because I think that's one of the things that YouTube will kill your channel over. Oh, not that's a good right, warning, but kill. So, um, good warning. They really don't like you going outside of that. So I'm not messing around with that. Um, I have a PayPal, but PayPal is super slow and whatever else. And, I don't want to mess around with trying to sort of circumvent. So, um, That's a good call. I take yeah. back everything I said. Do not do that. Don't hurt. Don't hurt Ian's channel. I love Ian's channel. Don't hurt Ian's channel. So Christina again says she lost me for good with her testimony. As a woman, you can feel when someone's fingernails are too long. She would have known if the bottle was broken. Um, yes, I am debating. I'm not enough drinks in to really respond and elaborate on that comment. So I will just, uh, yeah. So the binder she's referring to is her therapist notes, which is just bolstering. Yeah. I mean, call the therapist. If the therapist has something that is useful to say, uh, call the, you know, or if it's your comments from before that you want in, well, that's clearly hearsay. So the way you get that in is you get up on the stand and tell those things. But one thing you can never do is, you know, hearsay is I said this a week before, you know, this thing, and I'm still saying it now. Therefore, it's more credible. That is not admissible. That is, you know, improper. So, yeah, that's. Uh, when will Amber appeal? Um, I don't know if she's filed anything. She's got time. I don't think I think that her time starts running after the final judgment is entered. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. So she has 21 days after that judgment is entered to have a motion for reconsider filed and heard. The motion to reconsider can ask for an extension of the deadline to file a notice of appeal and to stay that deadline for filing a notice of appeal. But a notice of appeal must be filed 30 days after the final order is signed, which right now is slated for June 24th. So, yeah, that uh, she's got lots of time. Um, in fact, yeah, if it's not even started running, she doesn't have to worry about it too much. Um, so, hey, Rob, have you ever made a spice rack that fits behind beside the fridge and slides in and out? It's a really cool way to use that space. Goes from the floor to the top of the fridge. Not a spice rack, but I've made a knife block that does the same thing where it's a, a knife block that you can put knives in and pull it out like a spice rack. It's pretty cool. That is actually really cool. I want to do more... Uh, do more uh, uh, woodworking. I do some leather working. I have a bunch of uh, I have a bunch of woodworking equipment, but the only thing I've really done is uh, uh, it's a bit of pen turning, and uh, that's that's kind of fun. But I'd like to do uh, some more interesting aspects to it. Did you uh, did you did you happen to see a funny comment that was made on Twitter by um, none other than Mrs. Hogue? I made okay. the comment that we're going to do a leather working and woodworking thing, a project together. You and I are going to do it. And Mrs. Hogue said, because, well, implying that we both have ADHD, which we do. <laughs> she goes, I feel like that project is never going to get done. I was like, well, <laughs> that's probably true. That, yes, that is probably accurate. Um, what I made the comment, uh, one of the things I really like about leather work 
is that you'll get to a point where like uh, you've done the tooling, uh, you know, as an example, and your leather is still wet. So you don't want to start dyeing it because that water is going to fuck with your dyes in all sorts of ways you don't want. Uh, one of the ways that it does that is it can pull dye from one part of your leather, like all the way across it. And then you end up with these weird, you know, it wrecks it in all sorts of funky ways. So all you can do is sit there and set it aside and wait for it to dry. Well, while you're waiting for it to dry, what are you going to do? Well, you know, something else. You got to start another project. So it's great for attention deficit because you need to have like six projects on the go. Uh, or else you do a project for a while and stop and do something else for a while. It's like attention deficit just, you know, sort of manifested as a craft project. Yeah. Uh Ongoing outside YouTube, I know a few YouTubers, some really big, that take chats, but not super chat uh, using Streamlabs. In fact, one of them says avoiding Mama Susan every time <laughs> Streamlabs come. I'm going to have to look into it in more detail, but I don't want to mess with it today because that's the kind of thing you really want to check into before you, uh, you know, before you run into. Do you guys think any mailed SA slash DV victims are taken seriously under the law? Sometimes. Or do you think it could be handled better generally? Yes, it could be handled better generally, but sometimes. Uh, sometimes they are taken seriously, but I have unfortunately seen a lot of uh, male victims who come to court as the accused. And that's rough, right? Uh, do all of us lawyers have attention deficit? It's possible. I, I think there's something about law that kind of draws people in. Uh, and I get a lot of people commenting that they really like that, you know, that we're open about talking about attention deficit because a lot of people out there have had to hide that. And I get it. My career services person told me to, uh, she told me like, oh, don't tell anybody this. And I sort of went, yeah, I could do that. Or I could put this in every interview that I'd ever do. Um, that well, had it comes, it, I mean, but, and it comes out. Sorry. Like the, I didn't mean to cut you off, Uncle. Oh yeah, I, I not, really apologize. Not at it, all. It, it comes out like, and part of it is when Ronco and I cut each other off, which we do quite often, um, because like ADHD, like thought comes and you're like express the thought, and it's like express the thought, speak the thought, and then all of a sudden you end up um, six stories different, and it's like now we're talking about uh, uh, gun laws, and it's like we started talking about <laughs> something completely different. <laughs> It uh, it's very much sort of a, a thing that happens in in discussions. And I mean, it's fun. Uh, so he's saying, I feel like I'm harassing law too, but I'm going to ask you guys to please look into the Kaida hitchhiker. Would love both your opinions. I don't know enough about this to comment. I did get some stuff on it, but I'll have to look into it. And uh, that Sarah says, as a former bartender, please don't judge my uh, American industry on uh, one who didn't know what he was doing. Ask first if they know how. Tell us if they, if it's subpar and let us make it right. Also come to Cal uh, in and out uh, for life. Uh, next time I'm there, I'll probably try to hit an in and out, but uh, uh, I will probably be in California at some point. And uh, the, the thing is, is I was at like a Vegas bar and the vibe I got was not that this was the kind of place that was going to make it right if they got it wrong. Um I have another story I've told of I went to a bar in Hawaii and I asked them if they could make a Caesar and they said, we don't know what that is. So no. And then after that, uh, he basically said, well, I'll make a Caesar for you if you can, you know, get me the ingredients. So I went and did that and went and bought Clamato and brought it into this bar and I ended up drinking for free because he liked the Caesar and was happy that, uh, to have learned something. So, yeah. Uh, wouldn't the doctor be responsible to report to uh, DV? Um, that I don't know. On the Kurt, yep, sorry. Kurt did a great analysis of this and actually sent it in three separate super chats earlier today. Um, doctors are responsible in large part to report physical evidence of violence. Health professionals, mental health professionals are are generally um 
not required to report anything they learned in the context of that psychiatrist and patient relationship, whether it's violence related or not. They are supposed to tell the person who is saying they were a victim that they should go get help, but they are not required to report it outside of that. And in a lot of health professions, um, mental health professions, that is a breach of their ethical responsibility to the client to maintain confidentiality. Mm. And I see as an MD, I'd be very interested in those therapist notes as I've never seen anyone write a novel during sessions, nor have I seen reference to treatments or reporting of the crimes. Um, the other thing is that a lot of therapists who deal with uh, uh, DV or SV uh, claims or, you know, therapy don't take notes. Why? Because they might be subpoenaed. So mm -hmm. a ton of the time you go and you're like, hey, we want their therapist notes. And it's like, well, tough. They don't take any for exactly that reason. So it's it's really weird. Like I have seen somebody sent me a screenshot of uh, like a an image of that. And it really did look like it was written in a narrative as opposed to like. Yeah, yeah. Like. You know, these are my notes. And it's got stuff like WH, you know, uh, what is it? CV closing first, halo braid. Uh, like, that's what I like to hear, sense of humor. Those are the kind of notes you take when you're actually taking notes in a thing. Because you can't actually ask people to... Uh, you know, if you're doing a therapy session, you can't be like, oh, can you can you shut up for a minute? I need to write this down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, start off talking about law, wind up debating which is better, green or white asparagus. Yes. 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 Honey, 2800. Yes. This is exactly what happens. An attention deficit might, must be a superpower. We have some great law tuber with attention deficit. Brilliant minds. At times, it's a superpower. And at times, it is like it'll wreck your whole day. Um, yeah. So uh, Lindsay Metcalf, thank you for the very generous super chat. I just recently found out I had attention deficit after 30 plus years of being told I was just lazy. I didn't care enough to finish anything. It's been very hard starting to deprogram that and figure out actual coping mechanisms. You guys help with that immensely. Yes. Um, tons of people with attention deficit spent their entire childhood being told, why can't you live up to your uh, potential? Why can't you, you know, because, you know, isn't it just that you're just too lazy to do it? And fuck all the people who told me that. Just, yes. You know, yes, Runkle. Say it again. Yeah, fuck them. That's, that's it. It's just because it wasn't that I was lazy. It was that I was struggling. You know, it's like going, hey, you in the wheelchair, are you too lazy to get up those stairs? You know, you would never say that. You'd be a giant obnoxious jerk for saying that. And somebody's probably already clipped that. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, it's such a frustrating thing. So attention deficit issues are not issues. They're double-edged swords that need a for simply need a form to prosper. I was diagnosed with ADD in 1991, but my parents did not medicate me. God bless them. Be you. Um, I've taken medication. Medication works for some people. It does not work well for me, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, that's its own sort of chaotic issue. I'm not going to advise people on medication or not medication. And, and, and don't. And the thing yeah. is, I, I, so here's the thing, not medicated, medicated. Like we yeah. are two different people. One works for one, one works for the other, one doesn't work. Every single person with this is a different person. They have different things that they need or don't need or things that work for them or don't work for them. It's so individualized try to find help wherever you are and and there are ways you can you can deal with it yeah and viva used locals and rumble which allows tipping i'm on locals um i haven't yet tried uh, a locals stream i should at some point didn't amber heard want to move on with her life um no but she says that wasn't it elaine's big speech please allow amber heard to move on with her life and tell johnny depp to leave her alone um yep that was their big speech but now they're doing interviews Better get it while you can, Ian. Bill C-11 is going to shut us Canucks up and stop us from streaming. Yes, that is a terrible thing. Uh, Rob, when are you going to visit Canada? Ooh, that's a good question before it gets too cold. Yes, because um, 
I mean, we do have skiing, although I live in Alberta and there's good skiing towards the west of Alberta, but where I am, it's basically flat. So wait, where you are, do you have the electric thing that helps heat the car, but so it can start like when it's too cold? Yes. Oh, fuck. That's Let me cold. tell you. So I moved from Vancouver. Vancouver's a lot warmer. So when I came out here, I. I had not really experienced an Edmonton winter yet. And at the time I had a very weird work situation that had me uh, flying to Toronto and back every week, which was a messed up weird working situation. I got on a plane in, in Edmonton and it was about five degrees. I flew to Toronto where it was like a nice, you know, 12 degrees. And these are centigrade Celsius temperatures, people. So, don't try to, you know, these are not directly, uh, two degrees is a little bit above freezing because zero is freezing. I flew back into Edmonton and it was 40 degrees below. And I've just got to look up quickly what 40. I'm looking, I have a, I have a, I now have a converter calculator in front of me right now. 40 degrees below negative 40 Celsius. Yeah. Is a hundred. Oh, it's the same. Oh, it's, is it? The, yeah. It's. Apparently, so once you go negative, it's negative. Well, th th I guess negative 40 is the crossover point because there is a crossover point there. <laughs> but uh, I was like, okay, that's real cold. But how cold can it really be? I'm just in the parking lot. Now I was in the cheap value parking lot. So it was a bit of a walk. I'm like, I'll just walk there. By the time I got there, my fingers were so cold that when I pulled out my keys to get into the car... I fumbled them and I dropped them into snow that was, I can't show it on the screen deep. Um, it was about two and a half feet deep. And it just, it was this powdery snow and the keys just vanish into this. So I go and I start digging for my keys before something in the back of my head says, you are doing a very stupid thing. You were going to lose <laughs> fingers. Now at the time, because it was an old car, I had a spare key in my wallet. And because I have attention deficit and I'd locked my keys in the car before, you can't do that so much now with the big fat car keys. But uh, so I very carefully open up my wallet, fish out the second key and get into my car. And I'm sitting there trying to run the heater, but the heater is still blowing cold because <laughs> after it runs the heat over the air over the engine. It's still cold. <laughs> So I was using the cigarette lighter trying to warm the <laughs> And it was, I just sort of, I'm sitting there going, uh, so eventually I'm just like, okay, this is as warm as I'm going to get. And I had to drive home and I was, and those keys, they were just gone. Like my first set of car keys were still at the part at the airport. Uh, and that was my first introduction to, Right, it really does get cold here. So yes, don't come during that time. That's yeah, and you want me to visit Canada right now? <laughs> <laughs> right now it's warm. Now it's okay. Dry. Right now it's warm. Okay. Um, the winter is bad. Uh, so somebody's uh, Chris Marie. Do pathological liars ever admit or acknowledge their lies, or is it just hardwired? People have mentioned Gone Girl, but there is a 1945 film called Lever to Heaven uh, with Gene Turney that is worth a watch. Um, it really depends on why. Um, some people lie habitually for all sorts of reasons and some of those people are unable to even know the difference between truth and lies um, look up Korsakoff syndrome sometime it's really interesting because it's people who are lying and they don't know that they are and they're it's because their memory is gone uh, and it's gone in a way where you don't actually know it's gone it's messed up uh, two things. Handwriting looks suspiciously like Amber Heard's handwriting and Bonnie Jacobs was on witness list with no objection. So yeah, they could have called Bonnie Jacobs. No problem. They chose not to because maybe they ran out of time. Hmm. Amber Heard says in interview, abuse started 2011. She wasn't even with Depp then. First 2013, then 2012, now 2011. Anyone catch that? I didn't. But I uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, what's the role of mandatory reporter for teachers or social workers, the mainstream therapist available lately in the U.S.? Yep. That'll depend on state by state, I think. Well, and this this brought up an exception someone wanted me, wanted me to make a note of, <clears throat> which is true. When it involves children, 
or individuals that don't like aren't adults and have the voice for themselves children no matter what the circumstances are they are mandatory reporters yes uh although a lot of that depends on state so check with your local professionals especially like if you are in that industry you should know this and check with your local laws uh, so that's sarah i got into emily d baker two years ago via attention deficit youtube which led me to LawTube. You, Rob, and EDB are doing 100% uh, work for normalizing professionals with ADHD. I actually, um, before I was doing anything on YouTube, uh, watching Emily D. Baker was one of the things that convinced me that maybe I could do it. Um, so, yeah, she's fantastic. Um, Ash Yeshka saying, please ask Rob to add if children are involved, they must report. I think that was just, just done. I am probably missing some... Uh, some in this, uh, you know, aspect here. Uh, somebody saying having undiagnosed attention deficit was incredibly demoralizing. Yes, it is absolutely brutal. Um, do I live near? I don't know if that's a person or a place, but either way, I think the answer is no. Uh, somebody saying take Rob curling. I have never gone curling. I might be a bad Canadian. Uh, you sort of like hockey. I also don't like hockey. I think curling might be a little more interesting because it's a sport where you drink, and then there's this game that happens around the drinking. You don't drink during hockey? Everyone drinks during hockey. All Canadians drink. I mean, yes, but also, yeah. That was remarkably it's, insensitive of me to say, but all Canadians drink, right? Is law, um, <laughs> there are some who don't, but... Uh, is Law and Lumber smaller than Attorney Tom? No, nobody is smaller than Attorney Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, Wendy's Cafe rolling out and I'm, or laughing my ass off. Rob, you need to come right now because we have are going to be getting snow again in September. I live in the same city as Ian. Uh, yes, we all have block heaters we plug in. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Snow in September? Yes. Ian, I need your dates for August. <laughs> I will. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, September, it really does start snowing. And I see, Ian, have you stood outside in 40 degrees and threw your hot coffee into the air? I don't drink coffee, but I have done it with hot water. Um, and I think it has to be a little colder than 40 below, but you can get some interesting effects in really cold weather. Oh, and Wendy, Wendy, I have some great stories about the fact that Ian doesn't drink coffee or or any energy drinks and me trying to get him to focus at four o'clock in the morning. I drink um, energy drinks, just not coffee. I, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, attention deficit and training to be clinical counselor to help other neurodiverse people receive support and accommodations. Love that. Uh, love all the uh, AU and ADHD and AUHD people. Uh, I'm not sure on the AUHD term, actually, but... Uh, yeah, I have attention deficit. I've had to carry two keys when delivering pizza in the past after I locked the keys in my car one day. My manager, Jimmy, the lock open later that night. Uh, I locked them in again. Yep, I, I used to lock my car keys in all the time. And now I have a habit that when I get out of the car, I will check and put hands on keys before I'm closing the door. Um, it, you develop all these like little stupid habits that are just, you have to do them because otherwise, uh, yeah. And I am lost. Law student in New Zealand and stopped attending lectures the last couple of weeks. I thought watching yourself and Rob's stream was more practical and taught me a lot. Go to your lectures because we don't cover Please. New Zealand law. Please go to your lectures. <laughs> uh, didn't Hearn's team have Dr. Hughes uh, to interpret those doctor's notes? Absolutely. I thought she referred to them. Uh, I think she did, yes, to Bonnie Jacobs' notes. Might be wrong. I believe she did. She did. And i just trying to catch up here. Rob, age matters. Uh, any suggestions and thoughts on only why minors per se? Uh, they are legally incapable of actually expressing or voicing themselves. That's the way the law views them. Uh, the law views them as minors. They are not adults. They're not... Um, emancipated they can't talk for themselves in court and at what age were you guys diagnosed i'm 44 the more you guys and emily describe it the more i think i have it too i struggle with some things too i was really lucky i got a diagnosis at like 16 
because um i mean i my family is blue collar but blue collar and was able to scrape together enough money to go and send me off for a basic assessment of like hey this kid is smart why is he such a screw up and they came back with oh turns out he's got attention deficit which was yeah. great to know early yep uh, and do you want to share or are you willing to share with I, I was 24. They misdiagnosed me with, with depression. Uh, it turns out I wasn't depressed. It, it was that after I did a more thorough comprehensive testing, it wasn't I was depressed. It was that um, I was sad because my brain wasn't doing the things I knew it could do. Uh, and I was diagnosed with ADHD at 26. And that happens all the time with... Uh like attention deficit and depression go together real well because when you're sitting there going, I know I'm smart. Why can't I get the things done that I need to do? It can make you sad. Um, Rob, come to Colorado. If you like gambling on your weather, come to Colorado. <laughs> um, and somebody's saying, if I want cold, I should go to Yellowknife. Uh, I want to go sometime. Um, Where is that? Way North. Oh my. Like, like if you might see Santa North, uh, Santa, uh, I know him. Uh, my bro lives there. Warm temperatures from June to September here in Ontario. And who still has trouble believing Johnny Depp doesn't have scissors for fingers. Yeah. Uh, Jane to August is good weather in Alberta. Although I've seen snow in June. So it's really hit or miss. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it can be pretty brutal. Yep. And I see, uh, bots a bot we you know you've made it in in a stream when you've got the bots there uh somebody's saying there's more than one santa don't tell anyone but trust me oh that's scott so good information <sighs> all right let's uh keep going here scott scott's in everyone's chat tonight he is he's uh well he's gonna be on stream tomorrow i hope Assuming that nothing, yeah. yeah nothing goes on here and yeah, talking over the audio. Oh. We have to keep talking over the audio. Lies have been exposed to the world multiple times, right? I've been lied about anything I've been here to say. After describing the <laughs> abuse she says she suffered at the hands of Johnny Depp, Amber Heard then faced his attorney, Camille Vasquez. This Heard? This like Heard? Vasquez set out to convince jurors they couldn't trust a word that came out of Amber's mouth. A couple of people you in the background there. With Mr. Depp often during your relationship, didn't you? I had to defend myself as best I could. You just couldn't control yourself, could you, Miss Heard? Who was the real monster in this relationship, Miss Heard? Depp's team argued that Amber had a history of being untruthful. Case in point. Seven million dollars in total was donated to i split it between aclu and children's hospital of los angeles they played a clip from an interview on dutch tv where she said she had donated her seven million dollar divorce settlement to charity but it was revealed at trial that you haven't done so yet do you think that raised questions as to your credibility with the jury well i think you know look when you say to someone i bought a house are you lying because you have not paid for it in full at that point? Okay. Let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. when I bought, like I bought this house and sure I didn't pay for it in full because it's got a mortgage, but the previous owners received payment for it in full. Mm -hmm. The bank, you know, I owe the bank a pile of money. Mm -hmm. Like and you, you signed something. They actually yeah. said that you owe them money and you promised to pay. And if you didn't pay, what did they do? They take the house. Yep. And they cut the, it's gone. She said in that Dutch interview, because yes, she said the money was gone. It wasn't gone. Uh, that's a good cut and a good, uh, you know, good spot on that one. But yeah, I mean, the bank has, you know, if I stop paying them, the bank will take the house back because it's a legally binding contract, a pledge, you know, like if I say, Hey, ACLU, I'm going to pay you $10 million. ACLU can't do crap to me. They can't come after me for that. You know? So yeah. Uh, my Lord, tonight's the night you fight your dad. My Lord, what soap washes its mouth out with. Oh my God. <laughs> when you oh. were drinking there, it was funny. Cause, uh, once his mic was going on about, 
oh, Rob really likes his Malort. And he gets you to take another shot and just your face like curling. Could, itself. I, I think that thing could start a car engine. <laughs> it probably could. Uh, this is a question for you, Rob. Uh, so Christina, again, her husband wants to upgrade his table saw. Is this something Ooh. she could pick out for his birthday? And if so, tips or just let him pick his own. What I'll tell you is, is if you want to pick it up for your birthday and you have a budget that allows for it, saw stop. Um, if you don't have the budget for saw stop and no one does, like I don't have, no, no. Saw stop is my dream saw. No. Um, talk to him about it, see what he needs. But I would say that uh, Laguna Fusion, that's the saw I have. It's a great saw. It's reasonably priced. Um, talk to him about it, propose it to him, show him beforehand, get him involved in that discussion. Yeah, that's, uh, my dad keeps talking about how he thinks one day, every shop class, if there's still going to be shop classes, we'll have to have a saw stop saw. Cause the whole stop feature is some kid's going to lose a finger and there's going to be a lawsuit going, there's this yep. magic technology that could have kept your, this kid from losing a finger. Why don't yep. you have it? And I would like for them to release that uh, that litigation they keep on bringing up over and over again well after the copyright protections have expired. So that feature should be on every saw, uh, but thanks to SawStop's legal team, it's not. So Brutal. Uh, so Canadian prairie weather isn't that bad. It's a dry cold. Yeah, it really sucks the moisture out of you. Uh, yesterday was 33 centigrade heat. Yep, I'll take the cold over the heat. Absolutely. Law Patrol says, tried to give her the benefit of the doubt that she was talking about while a house is in escrow. Still doesn't work, though. Um, yeah, I, I... Even while it's in escrow, it doesn't make sense because, like, there's a payment that's about to be released. And often you're not in control of that payment. Like, if you tell your lawyer, don't release the payment, the lawyer might be like, I gots to, though, because, like, the legal conditions have been met. Uh, Kristen Moreno, thanks for sharing your stories and having this live stream. Hi from California. I'm a grad student doing homework. Nice to have the stream on while doing homework. Uh, yes, that's spoken like somebody who uh, thinks like I do. Mm -hmm. uh, Arctic Ginger, Yellowknife is a 15-hour drive from Edmonton or 1.5-hour flight. Be a good hunting road trip. At the moment, we have 22 hours sunlight. Perfect with attention deficit. Uh, I would love to go up there at yeah. some point and... Uh, I don't know what the rules are for hunting in Yellowknife, but that might be really cool. Uh, Ragged Ass Road, Yellowknife on my dream list. Absolutely. South of Winterpeg here, two seasons, Shovel and Swat are winter and road repair. 27 <laughs> second video. Look up North Dakota weather alert. Funny. Uh, Terry's asking, can they see a saw stop at SawCon? Okay, chat. You can finish the sentence because this, am I ever going to live this troll down? Ever, ever. Oh, is this, troll. is this a, uh, a troll? Did I walk into that? No, no, no. It was a good one. It was, it was, it was Kurt's best troll. I think he's ever done. <laughs> so hang on there. There we go. Chat's got it. Yep. You guys, you guys know what the rest of the sentence is. Saw con. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, yep. <laughs> nice. Um, did I both believe Amber heard when she made DV claims? I mean, I, I'm a criminal defense lawyer. I'm always skeptical of claims, but it seemed plausible. Um, like, when you hear rock star, movie star might get a little punchy, you go, it's, you know, it's plausible, but I always, like, I'm a criminal defense lawyer. I always have that voice in my head asking, are you sure? Like, are we at proof beyond a reasonable doubt? Did this definitely happen? So I wasn't like, yes, I'm 100% on board. But I was like, it sounds like it could have happened, you know? And I was sort of at the point where it was just like, I, I don't have anything invested in this. And, you know, um, if his career is burning to the ground over it, I guess that's a thing that happens, right? Yeah. It was later when I saw watched the trial, I was like, there's a real injustice going on here. And this case has the opportunity to fix it. So that's where I got sort of invested there. Uh, reason why not mandatory report for adults. Victim deserves agency and knows perp best. 
Reporting can escalate situation and make worse. Need time to make plan for safety. DV calls are very high risk for law enforcement. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Good observations. Yeah. Well, and in fact, they will teach law enforcement uh, that um, of all the, like, you might think that you're going to get shot on a, you know, an armed robbery at the bank. It's a lot DV. of DV, a lot of it. And often. Domestics. Highest incidence of officer fatalities is domestics. And surprisingly, a fair number of that is from the complainant. The mm -hmm. person who called the cops changes their mind and can be dangerous to the, to the law enforcement. And I hate to cut you off, buddy, but the chat is reminding me that I did promise Joe I would jump on for his 10 p.m. stream. Oh, that is so. perfectly fair. So, yep. Um, I will try to wrap this up too because I am getting bogged down in super chats. I can't cover all of them, folks, but uh, I do want to get through this interview because it is it is some BS, right? It's crazy. Um, it's crazy. And and Runkle has watched. Runkle has been involved in a lot of the commentary. He and I are chatting off the scenes. He's chatting with everybody else too. We all kind of agree on this this interview. It's bat shit wild so i leave you in his capable hands his adhd mind keep navigating him do your best to keep him on track and is is this joe talking about uh defense lawyering yeah okay then i gotta wrap up fairly quickly because i will okay i gotta comment for that too oh oh i'm excited for this one okay i get to be <laughs> quiet i get to be quiet i like that one all right i will uh i'll see you in a bit there all right see you buddy I uh, just read about a Canadian woman who went to her doctor for depression. Uh, government revoked her driver's license. Medical condition reports pay the reporting physician thirty six twenty five each. One doctor has been paid over a hundred and seventy five. I got to look into that. That's that's something else, and uh, that is insane. But um, yeah, the, those mandatory reports really do a lot to discourage people from reporting. That's era continuing the most dead, dangerous, deadly time for a DV victim is when they decide to leave and act on it. Many stats on that, absolutely. Uh, LEO reporting often escalates badly. That is absolutely true. Um, so that is definitely a thing there. I like the way Depp's team is handling this whole thing. Absolutely. And, I mean, to be fair, Depp's team has the luxury of, like, they're in the catbird seat here. So the copyright thing is because their ratings have dropped by a lot and they're upset by it. That is entirely, I think, likely. They know that this kind of commentary is covered by fair use and they are, you know, it seems to me they're looking to suppress uh, comments on it because we mocking it. Uh, diagnosed at 25 with attention deficit from doctor slash author book on attention deficit in adults. Was told I had worst case she had seen. I go 59 and still struggling. Suggestions. Um, I'm still struggling. I mean, you just do the best you can. You just keep fighting ahead. Um, I was actually told by one of my doctors looking at my test results that my test results on some of the screening things were results you don't normally see outside of a forensic population. What, and what that means is that most people with my scores in terms of severity are in prisons. I'm not in a prison. I'm doing pretty good. Um, but I don't really know... Um, I don't have the magic answers. Grade schooler in 1991, during the time when you had to be hyper to have ADD, finally got diagnosed properly at age 25. Rob, I relate. Yes, uh, those of us who have the sort of attention deficit that is uh, kind of the quiet, then yes. And people were asking about Joe. Uh, Joe is good logic. So uh, I see somebody saying he's too New York. Uh, Joe is very New York, and that is one of his charms. All right. Uh, I made a, a pledge and I'm that pledge is made over time by its nature. You're splitting hairs a little bit there because when you say I donated, you know that everybody thinks that you've donated it, not that you've pledged it. So for the jurors sitting there, do you think they felt like that was you getting caught in a lie? I, I don't know because so much of the... And here's the thing, like she could have said pledged it. She. You know, but that whole thing about pledged is the same as donated. Nobody bought that. And, you know, she was really trying to sell that, that this was the same thing. Nobody bought that. Um, I feel like so much 
of the trial was meant to cast aspersions on who I am as a human, my credibility, to call me a liar in, in every way you can. And that That's what cross-examination is. Like, I'm sorry, you don't get to complain that on cross-examination they suggested that you were not being honest because, one, that is what cross-examination is, and two, you weren't being honest. So the way you avoid that is by just straight up being honest. And I see somebody saying it's pronounced Michelada, not Michelada. I will try to remember that. That is because uh, they are tasty and I don't want to get looked at funny if I ever order one sort of in the places where they're usually, uh, you know, usually uh, served. That was the trial. It was a credibility contest. Depp's team also right. painted Amber as an attention seeker, saying she wrote that 2018 op-ed to coincide with the release of Aquaman. And they suggested this was a publicity stunt, a way to raise your profile at a time when these issues were quite relevant. It was one of those few moments of levity in the trial when I heard it suggested that my op-ed in the Washington Post could potentially boost sales for an international multi-million dollar superhero franchise movie that I was starring in. It's the other way around. You know, if anything, we we're trying to get more awareness and attention on the issues within the article. It wasn't a publicity stunt or a way to... It's the opposite. <laughs> okay, come on. Um, at the time, you know, people were getting national coverage for, as, you know, victims of various types of you know, abuse and the, uh, and I see people noting that there are comments edited out about the pledge. I'm going to have to check out that later because uh, this really should be run as a straight interview, not all of these edits. I got some real concerns with that, but uh, you know, at the time she was positioning herself as sort of the heroic victim of this, you know, horrible tale. Um, come on. And I found you with the rest of LawTube on week one of the Johnny Depp trial. Thank you for making things understandable. If Amber Heard hadn't gone over the top of their accusations, she may have had a chance. Also, not constantly looking at the jury, which I found creepy. Um, I, I mean, the person who claims to be a juror on Good Morning America says they found that creepy as well. And, I mean, I think the problem is her claims got so elaborately and sort of baroque that it was really impossible for them to be taken seriously. You get to this point where it's just like, um, are you kidding me? Like broken glass? He's threatening the, you know, the flight attendant, and yet the flight attendant isn't available to testify? Because the flight attendant testifying would have been a big deal. But the, uh, and I see somebody saying Rococo is the right term, so yes, probably, I'm not the best at the art terms, but uh, like the flight attendant is a detail I will just keep lingering on because, you know, every flight, they, they're going to log everybody who's on that flight who's part of the crew. And, you know, you grab somebody and almost break their arm or and threaten to break their arm. I feel like they'd be available to testify. And, you know, this whole story of you know, oh, she just, you know, took drugs, no problem. Flight attendants are drug tested all the time, randomly. Like, they don't get to know when that's going to happen. So, um, they're not going to just take drugs just because they're offered to them. Because, you know, that stuff can be in your system. They can, you know, they could walk off the plane and be told, hey, you got to have a drug test. And if they go and, you know, that'll be the end of their career. Keep in mind, you know, for most people on a plane, the flight attendant is the person who brings you your crappy $8 beer. Um, and, you know, that is one of the things they do, but it's not why they're there. The reason why the flight attendants are there and not replaced by like a beer vending machine at the end of the, you know, just on the opposite side of the bathroom is because they are critically important for safety. They're the people who, when the plane is on fire and... They're the people who are going to be stepping into gear. Like, they are first responders. That needs to be, you know... So, a plane is the only time a first responder for a disaster 
will also serve you a little cocktail. It's a weird sort of situation that we've created in society. But that, you know, that means that they get tested all the time. They take their job real seriously. And they're not just going to like, oh, hey, some rando, you know, is or, you know, even if it's Johnny Depp is handing me drugs, this will be cool. It's just not plausible. Help lawyers online continue to point out the court. Let both sides uh, get out their evidence with a legal process to the fact finders, not media cuts. Absolutely. And, you know, this was this was a really fair trial. So he says, I just did a handwriting comparison of the doctor's notes in Amber's diary, did a transparent layover. When there's a T and H, it's identical. That would be interesting. I want to see if I can try to find a handwriting analyst who might want to uh, come on, because that would be interesting. You know, Depp's lawyers called... Calm down. I'm not calming down on this. I'm sorry. Um, if the plane is on fire, they're the people who are responding. If you are in medical distress, they're supposed to act on it. Um, they sometimes have to disable angry, you know, people on the plane. They have to do all sorts of things. So, nope, uh, I stand by that one. Witnesses to challenge Amber's stories of abuse. One of Depp's friends testified about that fight on a plane when Amber says he kicked her. And it's your testimony that Mr. Depp didn't kick Amber? I, I didn't see anything like that. And to counter the photographic evidence of Amber's injuries, Depp's lawyers showed the jury a slew of pictures of the actress looking unblemished after the alleged abuse. Your nose doesn't appear to be injured in any of these pictures, does it, Ms. Hurd? That's why I'm wearing makeup. Amber testified that some of the photos Depp's lawyers brought to court were taken days, even weeks after the alleged injury. I really don't like the way they're framing this interview with cuts. Like, we watched the trial. We know what the trial is going on about. Like, just show us the interview and show us that you're not editing out large portions of it. Juries occurred. What I learned in that trial is it's, it's never going to be good enough if you have proof, then it was a scheme. It was a hoax. If you don't have proof, it didn't happen. Or if you have pictures that were somehow taken in the same second with every tiny wisp of hair in exactly the same place, and you say that it that you turn, you know, you change the lighting between them. Oh, right. Maybe if you, you know, having pictures is great. The problem with having pictures is that you need to have pictures that don't reveal that you are full of full of grumpy. We'll go with that. If you have a bruise, it's fake. If you don't have a bruise, then it did violence clearly didn't hurt you. If you told people, then you're hysterical. If you didn't tell anyone, didn't happen. How much did this sound like Rottenborn's closing? Like for a candid interview, that's Rottenborn's close. Why are you like, they are so on message and like, this isn't a, an honest open interview. This is just her messaging. All right. Chat, what do you think? Beer or wine? Let me know what you think uh, I should open up next here. Uh, Marshmallow Dreams and Lemon Drops. I'm a DV uh, survivor and she does not represent me. What she showed on the stand is not what is was normal. I have PTSD, nightmares and night terrors, anxiety and agoraphobia due to it. Yeah, and I mean, that is uh, a pretty common uh, experience there. So, all right, I'm seeing... More people saying wine than beer. Let me just see if this is one that I can open. Thank you, Ruckle of the Bailey, for the awesome coverage and for being non-biased. And Emily uh, Purple Hearts. Love to see them. Uh, do I need a... All right, chat. I forgot to bring a corkscrew. So I'm going to have to set this aside. We're going to do the beer. I forgot to bring a corkscrew in here, so. Uh, if I start in on that, it's going to be just a disaster. So let's uh, skip that. It is legal where I am. 
All right. After she got snippy about not really relitigating this with Savannah Guthrie. Yeah. All right. It's exactly as close. And she's been on YouTube to see us talking about Rottenborn and that his argument was convincing. Yeah. It gets a lot less convincing the second time uh, when it's supposedly coming as a, you know, a non-rehearsed statement. When it came to Amber's most explosive testimony, the sexual assault, Depp's team pointed out the allegations only came up after her divorce. In court, attorney Camille Vasquez pulled no punches. You testified you bled from your vagina as a result of that sexual assault. Yes. There aren't any medical records reflecting that you sought medical treatment for any of these injuries, are there? I did not seek uh, medical treatment after Australia, no. Not for the rape? No, I did not want to tell anyone. There's no... And I mean, fair enough. There's lots of people who don't go to seek medical treatment after various serious... But maybe not so much if they think it was with a bottle that they say they didn't know was, you know, broken. Um, that's... Yeah. Um, yeah, I, there are, I gotta say, like when people are victimized in SVSA situations, um, you know, people react differently, but she says she's bleeding and then she goes and she's, you know, writing op-eds about this. Um, like, yeah, the last thing you'd want to do if you were bleeding like that is to take a sleeping pill and go to sleep, which is what she testified she did, is take a sleeping pill and then go to sleep. I mean, if you've got that kind of bleeding and you knock yourself out, um, then you just have the serious potential that you may not wake up again. And, I mean, that is a... Uh, that's That's an issue. So... And I see people uh, asking if I can link this to Good Logic Stream. Uh, I've just tried to set that up. So hopefully, when this ends, it'll redirect people to Good Logic and you can see me there. All right, let's keep going here. No experience like being cross examined. What was that experience like for you? One of the scariest, most intimidating thing for anybody talking about sexual violence is not being believed, being called a liar, or being humiliated. Throughout the... And you know what? Fair enough that I, you know, that is an accurate statement, is that that is, you know, something that would be terrifying. Um, but the way to do that is just not to have so many lying, you know, so many obvious lies. And uh, I see a, a good rhyme there. My dog stepped on a bee. We love Runkle of the Bailey. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, by the way, Ian, uh, you, Emily, Rob, and so many more have through your coverage of this event. My 14-year-old feels like he's got a chance of a real life. Thanks. Um, I assume that's another sort of attention deficit remark, and that is fantastic. Because I will say, when I got my diagnosis, I had some concerns about, like, what does this mean? Does this mean, you know, I sort of thought it... Like I went and got sort of diagnosed and I was kind of hoping that there was something where they could just kind of fix me. And the answer I got was basically, we don't have a fix. Um, that was tough. But what I've learned is that there is a way forward, even, you know, if you're, uh, you're not fixed, but you're also not broken, if that makes sense. Um, so you can tell when Amber Heard is lying, her mouth is moving. Um, yeah, she's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I see uh, comments about Magical Elf Man there. I think that's me in the background there. I can't tell for certain because it's zoomed out a little bit. Uh, yeah, and there isn't a cure for tension deficit, but at the same time, now, you know, in my 40s, um, I don't know that I'd give it up. I don't know that I'd trade it in. There are moments that I have with my attention deficit that are magical, and I would be upset to lose those, even if it meant that I gained other things. Uh, they had things in the preview clips that made her look bad, edited out in the full episode. It's ridiculous. I'm sure people had something to do with that. It's hard to imagine who else would have. Um, and Roxanne wins. Scott uh, Cardinal investigates who was at the trial. Uh, 
Has the video debunking the city block and unrepeatable signs? Absolutely, and it's an excellent video. All right, let's keep going. Trial, both sides fought to get additional evidence in front of the jury to bolster their claims. Some of it was deemed hearsay under the rules of evidence and declared inadmissible by the judge. Is there one piece of evidence that you wish the jury had seen that you could point to? You say, ah, oh, this would have made the difference. Yeah. What is it? There's a, a binder worth of years of notes dating back to 2011 from the very beginning of my relationship that were taken by my doctor who I was reporting the abuse to. Which is clearly hearsay. Like this was, that's something that you obviously know was never going to get in. And like that, that's so, it's so obviously not going to get that in. That doctor was ridiculous. Amber's therapist at the time. We looked at notes the doctor took during some of their sessions, which show that as far back as 2012, Amber was talking about physical abuse. I have never seen therapist notes that look like that. Um, therapist notes usually look like hot garbage. You know, they're, they're chaotic. I mean, this might be something that's written up after the fact. But most therapists aren't writing their notes up after the fact in this kind of thing because you got to pay them for their time. So somebody's saying with a broken bottle, it would do unspeakable damage. You'd have no choice but to go to a doctor immediately, especially if it happened the way she said. Yeah. Uh, somebody's saying, whoops, somebody was saying, did the binder get in at the UK? I don't know. That's an interesting question. Um, the UK might have different rules about uh, hearsay. In January of that year, she told her therapist Depp hit her, threw her on the floor. Eight months after that, ripped her nightgown, threw her on bed. And in 2013, the therapist's notes say he threw her against a wall and but threatened to kill her. this is all her testimony. I they didn't get that talking out. talking about what's happening to me. In real the way you get that out is she gets up on the stand to testify. And, oh, right, that happened. She was able to do that. You don't get to just say, oh, well, I said it before, so it's true. That's not proper. Biggest tell she wasn't injured is not only no medical treatment, but she never says another word about tending to her injuries, removing glass pain. Yeah, the walking on glass thing would have been just... Like, I'm sorry, that sends you to a hospital. And if it doesn't send you to a hospital, it sends you to some real serious care. Um you know, if you doubt me on this one, go break a bottle and walk on it in bare feet. And none of you are going to do that because, oh, my God, that would be dumb. I, and for YouTube people, I'm not actually telling anybody to do this. This is a, a joke for, you know, for sort of, uh, you know, elaboration purposes. Like, there is no way any human being would ever do that. And I see somebody in the chat mentioning, and she was dancing after that. Right? Right? Um, I'm sorry. I've stepped on a piece of glass that was a little tiny piece of glass and I wasn't walking right for days. Like, yeah, it's just ridiculous. Real time when she was taking contemporaneous notes of what was happening. Amber's lawyers also showed us text messages that were exclusive. So contemporaneous is, as Rob mentioned, legal phrasing. Um, uh, you know, it means at the same time, and yeah, you know, it's part of the test of whether or not something might be admissible. Um, the fact that she's using the legal phrasing is not great here. There's Australia audio that proves the essay didn't happen. Dr. Kipper was there with a nurse. She was acting hysterical, and they gave her something due to hearsay. It was not allowed in. Yeah, I mean, there were plenty of things that were not allowed in because they were, you know, on both sides. Um from trial like this one she sent to another therapist saying Johnny did a number on me I thought I had a concussion and this text message she says she sent to her father after that disputed incident on the plane she wrote he kicked me in front of everyone I testified I was attacked on that flight and I was attacked in front of people and I when I got off the plane sent messages to people about what had happened I'm angry because this happened. Can you believe he did this and this and this, you know? And one of the people I reached out to was my father. And this is classic hearsay. Like, this is textbook hearsay. This is obviously, you know, situations where, 
Like, this is the obvious scenario for evidence you can't get in. This is like, this is first year law. Depp's lawyers say the judge's rulings were fair, and a Depp spokesperson told us it's unfortunate that the defendant and her team are back to repeating, reimagining, and relitigating matters that have already been decided by the court. And here's the thing I really hate when people attack judges in this kind of way. I mean, like, as parties to the litigation, like as a an independent commentator, okay, sure. You know, or the news media even. I'm less, you know, but the the judge can't defend herself. She can't do a press conference where she says everything Amber says was BS because she just can't. Like it's just something that she's not allowed or able to do. It would be improper. So when they're attacking the judge for keeping this evidence out, I'm like, that's kind of, save it for the appeal brief. Uh, Penny Ottawa, she memorized the notes. I remember those words from her testimony. Also why she spoke so fast in so many words. It's possible she was, you know, repeating those uh, words. Amber thinks the case wasn't just decided inside the courtroom. She believes what happened outside made all the difference. Coming up. The majority of this trial was played out outside of a courtroom. The social media storm. Did it affect the verdict? You think the jury saw it? How could they not? When Dateline uh, continues. Come on. Like, you're just theorizing at this point that the jury must have seen it. And you've got no evidence for, for that at all. And, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's a text message where Johnny promises total global humiliation for you do you feel like that came true i know he promised it i testified to this i'm not a a good victim i get it i'm not a likable victim i'm not a perfect victim i get it i'm not a saint she's repeated that same set of lines now several times uh it's because this is a talking point and she's been told to repeat that repeatedly so uh not asking anyone to like me, but when I testified, I asked the jury to just see me. Oh, that was interesting. Let's go back to that. I'm not a, a good victim. I get it. I'm not a likable victim. I'm not a perfect victim. I get it. I'm not a saint. Watch the interviewer. Not asking anyone to like me, but. I'm not asking anyone to like me. Blink, blink, swallow. Did you catch that? Blink, blink, swallow. Interviewer doesn't like her either. <laughs> Gotta love it. Uh, that's uh, not asking anyone to like me. That is a clear... Uh, it's either that the interviewer doesn't like her or the interviewer is calling bullshit. One of those. Uh, that is a clear sort of uh, stress response there. Um uh, that's funny as hell. Uh, I, yeah, I, I want to ask Spidey about this. Um, let me just 2908. Okay. I got to just write this down here. Uh, 2908. Ask Spidey about this. Cause uh, I want to see if he caught that too. Uh, so I gotta, I gotta check with him. When I testified, I asked the jury to just see me. As human and hear his own words, which is a promise to do this, a promise to humiliate me, a promise to ruin me, that feels as though he has. As the trial unfolded inside that Virginia courtroom. Here's the thing. They saw you as a person. They just saw you as a deeply flawed human being. And, you know, that is what human beings are like. You know, human beings suck a lot of the time. Um, human beings are, you know, problematic for all sorts of ways, but, you know, they didn't, they didn't not see you as a person. They just saw you as a lying person. Uh, so when Depp gets accused of being an abuser, he gets exiled and sent to hell. But when Amber is proven to be a scumbag liar, she gets an hour long TV special. I hate it here. I mean, I would love to see if the, uh, I feel like. 
somebody was asking, do I think that she had editorial control? And I kind of feel that she, that that was probably given to them is uh, that they had to approve a final edit and they may well have gotten the questions beforehand because a lot of the answers are super well prepared. <laughs> Somebody saying, lol, that freeze frame, and uh, you're not wrong. That's a funny, uh, funny stop there. All right, let's keep going there. Amber Heard and Johnny Depp were being judged in the court of public opinion. This Johnny Depp, Amber Heard thing has been going on for a little bit now, and it's gotten pretty wild. Though both stars had their supporters on social media, there is no question that the internet sided against Amber Heard. Ew, this is so cringe. Guilty. I mean, this was a sort of medieval orgy of hatred. Michelle Goldberg is an opinion oh, columnist oh, for the New York Times. Medieval was, orgy you know, of people hatred? really enjoyed joining in. That's, you know, often the case with mob behavior. And I think that's essentially what this was. It was kind of, you know, misogynist mob behavior. On okay, yeah, there we go. Um, of course, they got to throw that in there. I'm sorry, like, this is not because of misogyny. Uh, I've, there, people were watching this and were able to spot this for what it was. Uh, her testimony was just not credible. And, uh, yeah. This is such a way to just devalue the discussion. Oh. Line people picked apart Amber's every move videos ridiculed her facial expressions and accused her of faking emotion on the stand this this is just a fake crying train wreck you can't look away from johnny you hit me you hit me it was real yes the reason why people were mocking that is because it looked really fake and in fact do you remember amber heard's acting coach do you remember what she said about Amber Heard's ability to cry? She said, I knew she was telling the truth because she was crying for real and she had tears and she can't make tears when she's lying. What did she proceed to do or when she's sorry, when she's acting? What did she proceed to do when she was up on the stand? No tears, no tears. Amber's acting coach who testified for Amber called her out by accident. Uh, New York opinion writer. Who is she for us to care about her opinion? No one. That's who. Yeah, I mean, an opinion writer is. I'm not sure what that what qualification that is. That's kind of like you know, man who saw a cow once, as you know, thing on your resume. Really striking to me to see all of these people engaging in this trend of reenacting her testimony. And I was walking out of the bedroom, slapped me across the face. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. A domestic violence trial becoming this source of national hilarity. One it's because usually a domestic violence trial is somber. Usually there's nothing to laugh about. Uh, the thing that you... This became a farce because the testimony was so awful. One of the most infamous moments in... And I see in chat, I have offended the people who've seen a cow once. I am sorry. The trial was when Johnny Depp suggested she may have defecated on their bed. And on my side of the bed was human fecal matter. Amber denied it, but that didn't stop the internet from branding her with a viral nickname. I saw what was happening to me in real time. I don't care what one thinks about me um, or what judgments you want to make about what happened in the privacy of my own home and my marriage behind closed doors. I, I don't presume the average person should know those things, and so I don't take it personally. But even somebody who is sure I'm deserving of all this hate and vitriol, even if you think that I'm lying, you still couldn't tell me Look me in the eye and tell me that you think on social media there's been a fair representation. You cannot tell me that you think that this has been fair. Okay, you're never guaranteed fair in the public opinion. And I can tell you what happened to Johnny Depp was not fair. And 
you know, that. So fair doesn't come into this, but I mean, I'm sorry, Amber, you see a little, seem a little upset, maybe a little grumpy. Sorry, I had to. Um, yeah. Oh, did I just get, uh, did I just get struck? Huh? Fun times. Huh. Policy violations. 